Quarterback Chris Howard not eligible for the game today. He still has some work to do from the summer classes. So he will not dress and play today. And uh, that just adds to the number of questions about their offense. Both teams defensively are set, uh, Keith. But uh, for Michigan, at least today, it's the return of Scott Dreisbach. Dreisbach started and won the first four games of last year as a redshirt freshman. Then he was injured. He hurt his thumb two surgeries later. He's gone through spring practice, and he is back. The problem for Scott today is all of his skill players are gone. The two wide receivers, the tight end, and especially Tim Biakabatuka, the running back, are all gone. That's 74% young people at the skill positions for Michigan. But that adds to the, the loss of Howard, adds to the problem uh, that Michigan has had trying to run the ball against a good uh, defense. There's no question about that. Michigan wants to run the ball and throw. This is going to just make it that much tougher. Illinois' defense is in pretty good shape, as is Michigan's. The offense for the Illini, uh, pretty feeble. The quarterbacks were sacked 30 times last year. Well, they were, and they were last in the Big Ten in total offense. They were 102nd in the nation. A couple of reasons. They've changed offensive systems the last three of the last four years. That's always tough when you change the words in the offensive system. The other thing is I think they're going to be better because Scott Weaver, the quarterback, doesn't have to alternate this year. Johnny Johnson is gone. It's his job. He's got to be more confident. Yeah, you had a nice analogy a little while ago when you said it's like speaking French one season and German yeah. the next. It's the same plays. It's just calling him other things. It's tough. Now, uh, Weaver, his, his job. But again, you come back to the fact that uh, they can't stick in the end zone. They don't produce points. Well, they've always relied on their defense. And as long as Lou Tepper is at Illinois, they will have a good defense. They've lost a couple of good ones. Kevin Hardy and Simeon Rice are both gone from that defense. But the defense will be strong. And I think the offense will be strong. They're going against a tough Michigan defense here today, though. Well, now, the Michigan State Spartans are whipping up on Purdue today up at East Lansing. We saw Penn State arrive last Sunday against uh, Southern California. Does this mean that we are at a level of parity in the Big Ten and a half a dozen teams well, can win it? I, I think you're exactly right. You remember the days when it was the Big Two and the Little Eight? Those days are long gone. Northwestern, of all people, won the conference. There are several teams that can win it. Here's one of the great moments in college football right here as the Wolverines come into the stadium. After 73 consecutive games, these teams will not meet again until 1999. That comes from having to schedule 11 teams in the Big Ten. This is the 130th consecutive crowd of more than 100,000 in Michigan Stadium. Got a brand new turf this year, too. Standing on it, our colleague, Lynn Swan. And, Keith, it does feel good to my feet. <laughs> a lot more cushion here. Illinois beat Michigan here on this exact field in 1993. Lou Tepper, in an effort to duplicate that, has done everything exactly the same. He came in late Friday night. He stayed at the same hotel. He brought his daughter with him in 1993, so he brought the same daughter with him again. And he even had the same motivational speech this morning at the pregame meal. And when I talked to him on the field, he said, this is not going to be, in my opinion, one of those 14 to 17 slugouts in the Big Ten. He believes you've got to score a lot of points to get on the board. And Vance Bedford, the Michigan defensive secondary coach, Keith, he was watching a pregame warm-up. I said, have you seen anything interesting? He said, yeah. They're throwing the football a lot more than I like for them to do because I'm the defensive secondary coach. We'll look for it in the air early, Keith. Okay, Swanee, and we're set to go. As we said, this series will end after this game for uh, uh, two or three, four years because there are two teams that uh, will not appear on your schedule as they work their way through the awkward scheduling of 11 teams because you want to have some non-conference game. So it's Butterfield number one, Tyrone Butterfield one, Chuck Winters number five, shoe climb kicks off for the Illini, and here comes Winter. A defensive back gets off one tackle, and then he is taken down at the original point of contact at about the 21-yard line by Ty Delthard, who is a very good running back and pass receiver for the Illini. The quarterback for the Michigan Wolverines, Scott Dreisbach, sophomore. He was 4-0 as a starter, then tore up a thumb, had a couple of surgical trips with that, missed the rest of the season. He's got three touchdowns and three interceptions, and his future is still in front of him, if you will. 
as a sophomore he hasn't had a whole lot of experience so from the 21 it is first down for the Michigan Wolverine and it's Clarence Williams on the first carry of the ball game Williams will take it out for six yards to the 27 yard line the Chili's starting lineup Michigan backs and receivers are these Ty Streets comes in at a wide out position occupied by so many great players in the past and there's a goodly bit of heat on the six foot two inch hundred eighty five pound sophomore they need him to step up Clarence Williams is the tailback five nine one hundred ninety six pounds he is out of Detroit Chris Floyd is in the backfield with him he is also from Detroit and on the second carry it is Williams this time stopped short of the line of scrimmage banged down for about a two yard loss and it was the middle of the defensive front for Illinois that got him. Thomas Gwines has played just about everywhere along uh, the offensive front for Michigan but those three guys in the middle there Denson Payne Adamy they are the anchor there that's the group that will hold this offense together until it gets on track. The one thing about the offensive front Bob is the backups at both tackle positions are freshmen are very young. Keith. There's no question about it. the depth on both teams is very thin. Third down and six for Michigan. Drysbox first pass. Drilled to his tight end, Jeremy Tuman. Tuman will have a first down up at the 33 yard line. And Tuman made a good catch and a good play. He was pretty well covered. That's what happens, though, when you get the size advantage. Number 46, Dennis Stallings, another one of those great Illinois linebackers, a senior out of East St. Louis, Illinois. The defensive secondary led by Trevor Stargell. Stargell, not all that big at 5'8", 180, but makes a lot of noise at that corner position. On first down. No backs in the backfield. Underneath, Paul ricocheted and was almost picked off by one of the defenders. Marshall, I think it was, had a chance to get the ricochet, but it fell incomplete. So look at Dreisbach completing your first pass back after sitting out nine games last year with that injury, Keith. It had to be uh, a big relief for him. As you see, Tuman coming off. Looks like he's holding his thumb, but, but a new passing scheme uh, this year for Michigan. That short passes, you may see a lot of those. Tight ends, Stan Parrish came over as quarterback coach from Rutgers. He's, uh, he's taking care of the quarterbacks, and he's put in a lot of the short passing game. That last one was kind of scary. There was a lot of traffic around that. Chris Floyd is the single back now for the Wolverines. 227 pounds and quite quick. Here's a look at him. He pops in there with some authority up to the 36 yard line. It'll be third down at about seven. There is another 100,000 seat stadium in the land now. The University of Tennessee has gone over 102,000, but Michigan remains the biggest. There's talk down in Texas that eventually the Darrell Royal Memorial Stadium in Austin might be raised to 100,000 or more. Mm -hmm. UCLA better get used to these big stadiums because they come here in a few weeks and they have Tennessee when next week. Yeah, but they play in Rose Bowl. So yeah, they they used to that, shouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little quick pop under thrown. Not a very good pass. Aaron Shea makes the catch, though. Rice box pass was low and he didn't have a chance to turn his shoulders upfield and it brings the punting team on. Yeah, he short armed that one a little bit. Paul Peristeris, 6'2", senior from Lincoln Park, Michigan, is in to do the punting, number 99. There you see the numbers on him from 1995. Marcus Mosley is the deep man for the Illini, number five. He's a junior out of Bloomington, Illinois. A lot of football players coming out of Bloomington, Illinois area these days. Good snap. A kick is away. It's a good kick. And Mosley went ahead and took it. And then he is taken down on a short tackle at about the 17-yard line. A 46-yard punt and no return. So the Illini are about ready for their first offensive possession. Well, after Michigan handled the ball and got a first down, punted away, no score. Now we see Illinois' offense coming to the field, led by quarterback Scott Weaver, 6'2", 205 senior from Beaver Falls, PA. His job, he shared it the last couple of years, actually came off the bench and played very well against Michigan, but look at the interception. 
Eight touchdowns and 15 interceptions. We pointed out, hard to complete passes flat of your back. They were sacked, the quarterbacks were 30 times last year. Weaver stands up quick, comes outside, Mosley gets a block. He's across the 20, out near the 22. That's a pickup of close to five yards. The starting lineup now for the Illini, backs and receivers, Chile's starting lineup. Robert Holcomb is a 215-pound tailback, a very steady fellow, came from Mesa, Arizona, and uh, he doesn't need a whole lot of yardage to become the all-timer over at Illinois. Gained over 1,000 yards last year, Keith, as a sophomore. Second down and five. The Illini using motion as Weaver goes back and throws again. This one comes down the middle, goes off to the right side. The pass is caught by 83. That is Jason Dulick. He is a primary target for Scott Weaver, has been and will be today. He's pretty good size target at 6'5 and 200. Well, he is an outstanding receiver. Caught 116 passes so far in his career. Illinois coming out, throwing the ball in their first two pa uh, plays. The Illini offensive starters are very big people. We'll show them to you in a moment. We have a chance here. It is first down for the Illini up on the 37-yard line. And here's the running play with Holcomb carrying, coming around the corner, across the 40 and up to the 42. The offense in front for Illinois averages 6'4". They weigh 297 pounds. Now, Kerwitz is probably the bell cow of that group, and uh, he is in at 298, but Chris Brown is over 300, Brian Shaw is 300, and J.P. Machado is 304. Chris but, Brown, the center, Keith, was a tackle last year, shifted the center, and that's the key for that offensive line. You need a good center to make the, the line calls. Ty Douthert is in the backfield now as they split the backs with Holcomb on second down and five. This is Holcomb looking for some room, finds it first down midfield to the Michigan side at the 49-yard line. The defensive alignment, Jarrett Irons, is one of the premier linebackers in the country for the Michigan Wolverines. David Boyd's a very good defensive end. The name of the day... Sam Sword. <laughs> you got steel and irons and sword. I'm looking for the shield. <laughs> Charles Woodson is uh, was the freshman of the year at that defensive back, the cornerback position last year for Michigan. Very good. Only a sophomore. First down for the Illini. They're moving the ball. Weaver back. Throws quickly. Has a target. Tight in. Matt Cushing, junior out of Chicago. He makes a catch worth about four or five yards. We mentioned that Robert Holcomb was about to become, with a reasonably good season, uh, the all-time leading rusher for the Illini. He only needs 658 yards to become that. He was the number four rusher in the Big Ten last year. He's a very tough, very steady football player. Holcomb is out. Douthard now is the single back as they go three wide. And Weaver straight back. Jared Irons came blowing home and got him. But Irons is going to come right up the middle. Illinois had been moving the ball. Nice run, a mix of run and pass. Weaver been looking good, but Irons says that's enough of this. Let's get the blitz going. Both linebackers, Sword. Sword comes on the outside. Irons comes right up the middle. Number 37. Nobody blocks him. Nobody touches him. Man, I'm sure Weaver's, Weaver's saying, hey, this is shades of last year. Come on, guys. That's right. <laughs> Deja vu. I want to go home. Third down and 14. This is Dothard. Here's another very good football player. And he runs it back to near the 42-yard line. So they'll need about three as they come up. The fourth to down. Be fourth down here inside uh, inside. Michigan's half of the field. Fourth and three, though, they're going to kick. Yeah, I, that's a little bit of conservative call, but I agree with Lou. You know, when you're on the road, it's uh, third and 15. Don't get a turnover. Just play defense. That's your strength. Pooch kick needed here. That's a pretty good one. Force is a fair catch call, and the ball's going to be dead back at the 13-yard line. Chuck Winters made the catch, and Jason Higgins did the punting for Illinois no score after each team possesses the ball. 
College football on ABC Sports, brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. The Corel Corporation, makers of Corel Word Perfect Sweet. And Dean Witter. There are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. Michigan comes up, put it on the 14-yard line, and it's first down with a tight end in motion. Tubin. Rise box with single back Clarence Williams. Williams searching for some daylight, finds the crack, and gets out to the 21. Seven-yard gain. Williams is quick. He is quick, Keith. He is a jumpy. In fact, he is the leading returning rusher for Michigan. As I mentioned in the opening, the Akabatuka took his 1,800 yards and went to the NFL a year early. And Clarence really, Williams really has the pizzazz and the speed to uh, rival the speed of Biak Patuka. And in case you missed it, Chris Howard, not eligible for the game, learned this morning that he has not completed his academic work from the summer session. Until he does that, he will not be eligible. Chris Floyd at fullback. Ahead of Williams, it's Williams carrying again, and he is short of the first down. The Illini stack the middle, number 46. He is right in the heart of things there, along with 66, Garrett Johnson. That's Dennis Stallings. And he's another, as we told you, one of those uh, great linebackers at Illinois. It's interesting, Keith, that uh, Dick Butkus, one of the great all-time linebackers at Illinois, has the linebacker award named after him. And uh, two Illinois performers, linebackers, have won that in the last two years. Dana Howard two years ago, and then Kevin Hardy last year. Dennis Stallings has been nominated for it, as has Michigan's Jared Iron. So Illinois is... Uh, rivaling some other places for linebacker you they're at least a half yard maybe more almost a full yard short of the first down at six minutes and 57 seconds to play in the first quarter Lloyd Carr in his second year as the Michigan head coach he was nine and four last year he was the defensive coordinator under Gary Moeller until he succeeded Mo as the coach here at Ann Arbor He's been here, actually. He was on Bo Schimbeck's staff, so he's been here since 1980. He has. Uh, well, a couple of years he was at Illinois, in fact, Keith. Uh, he was yeah. over there with uh, with Moeller yeah. when Moeller was the head coach over there as a defensive coordinator for the Illini. So. Well, here's a bit of uh, third down and a very short yard as the quarterback keeps it and just follows the middle of the offensive line, Denson Payne Adamy, and he will pick up the first down. At the conclusion of today's game, we will select the genuine Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet awarding nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. So they saw the Illini stunning in the middle. Quarterback kept it, just slid off to the right and churned up the yard and a half that he needed. First down from the 25. Got two guys moving, one of you better stop. Now here comes the third one. Everything's legal. And Bryce Bond looking. Goes hard to Williams, the tailback. Williams had stepped up into a slot. We were told that he would do that some this year because he is a good receiver, but he couldn't reel that one in. And Keith, you mentioned about all the movement that Michigan is doing, and, and both teams actually are doing. The reason you do a lot of movement is to confuse the defense. You come up to the line of scrimmage, the defense sets their defense on your offensive strength. Then you change strengths, they got to react to that. Then you set a man in motion again, that may change strength again. It's just all that movement is to confuse the defense. Second down and 10. The handoff goes to Williams, and he's taken down just about the line of scrimmage. Eric Gunther. Out of Thousand Oaks, California, at an inside linebacker position, made the tackle. He is the nephew of the athletic director at Illinois, Ron Gunther. So not too hard to figure out how come he's over there. Number four is on the field right now for the Michigan Wolverine. Or was, if he's still out there, Russell Shaw. He came here from El Camino City College in Torrance, California. He's the first J.C. recruited Michigan since Mike Kerr back in 1986. It's third and ten. They come. Reisbach passes away. On the money. Tight end. Jeremy Truman. First down Wolverine. You know, that 
Tuman is 6'5", 233, a sophomore out of the town where they have the world championship pancake race, yeah. Liberal Kansas. Watch from behind the defense. The linebackers are going to blitz. 41 is not blitzing. The other ones are. Good protection. Dreisbach steps up. The tight ends in this offensive system for Michigan, I got a feeling, Keith, are going to catch a lot yep. more balls than they have in the past. That pass was a good one, too. Right on the money. Right there. First down, ball is at the 44-yard line. This is Williams. Well, they're not finding much running room yet. Danny Clark and Eric Gunther made the tackle. Here's a look at what Michigan is replacing. Bianca Patuka left. Hayes and Toomer, both wide receivers. They all caught over 40 passes. Reimersma was a tight end. 74% of that offense is gone for Michigan. A lot of inexperience at the skill positions. High Screech, number 86. He's yet to see the ball. That's Shaw in motion. He's a burner. He's going on a fly down the other side. Underneath with it to Clarence Williams, and Williams turns up field for a first down as the tailback makes the catch and produces the first down. This is another thing that Stan Parrish brought in with him from uh, Rutgers when he came over. You see the protection very good. The halfback crossing shallow, more passing to the backs and the tight ends. It was a favorite uh, trick of uh, Howard Schnellenberger when he was with the Dolphins in University of Miami to throw to the backs and the tight ends. You'll always move the ball if you can throw to those backs and tight ends. First down just inside the Illini 43, and it's the first real offensive movement of the day by either team. Dreisbach has time. Now runs out of time and takes off. Hook slides for about six. He's the feisty sort of a fellow. Uh, despite the trouble with the thumb last year, retains that same zest. He's got good feet. Get qu yep. Yeah, quick, uh, good feet. Get out of the pocket. Get out of trouble. Last year, Illinois defensively, they were first in the Big Ten against the pass, second in scoring. So this is a, an awfully good defensive team. Even though they lost Rice and Hardy, the scheme is good, and they'll always be good defenses behind Lou Temple. Nobody behind him now as Dreisbach calls the snap camp, stands up in a hurry, throws quickly to Williams. He wants to throw it, coming back across the field to Dreisbach. He drops the ball. Boy, did they have it set up. Butterfield was the man uh, that threw it back across the field to Dreisbach. Tyrone Butterfield, a wide out, a sophomore out of Miami. Well, and, and, and in high school, Butterfield was a quarterback. Yep. So, and then, Keith, you remember this play in this same stadium? What was it, Florida State? About yep. four, five, six, yep. seven, eight years ago. Yep. Florida State used that same play, throwing it one way and brought it back. So, Illinois has called timeout. We've got 347 to play in the first quarter. Nobody scored yet. Monday night, the biggest names in the history of professional football will share memories with us in a one-hour primetime special, ABC's Monday Night Football Mania. The game will be Chicago Bears hosting the Dallas Cowboys, led by Troy Aikman. Of course, the Cowboys starting defense of their world championship on the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Check your local listings. Keith, let's go back and take a look at that last play and, and why. Let's go ahead and run it. This is a screen, a throw out to the left side. And you do this early in a game when a defense is fresh because they're all chasing over there where the ball is. Now when you come back to this side, if we'll stop it right here, stop it. Look at all the Illinois players on this side of the line. Only one back over here. So you'd use this play when you have a defense that really runs to the ball early in the game when they're fresh. They just didn't yeah, catch the ball. <laughs> Butterfield threw a, a knuckler, but still drives back. Had a lot of room if he'd have held on to it. Had a lot of company. Third down and four. Down the middle, ball thrown hard and bounces off the shoulder pads of Kai Streets. And so the Wolverines are turned away. Had a man in his face. He had to throw it maybe a little bit quicker. In practice, maybe that was over the field a little bit more than it should be. But 
Defenses that jam wide receivers, and Illinois did a good job of that. Coach kick time coming up. Brian Greasy, quarterback, is in punt formation. So they're looking for a pooch kick or a pass, but they want the pooch. They want somebody to knock it high in the air and kill it deep, and he's done it. He's There are three of them back there, and they can't catch the bloody ball. Oh, my goodness. You get everything you want. You get a quarterback in the punt situation, so that slows down your rush. I'm sure they've got other plays from this where Greasy, the quarterback, and punter will do something, but you've got Michigan special teams over the years have not been as sharp the last few years, and this one is indicative. Don't let it get to the one-yard line. Take it at the three or four. I mean, just... Uh, Just young kids out there, Keith. <laughs> you never know what a 19-year-old's going to do till he's done it. Yeah. All right, it's first down for Illinois as they get a break. Come out to the 20-yard line, and Weaver sets them up with double wide. And gives it to Holcomb. Works it between the guard and center. And there isn't a whole lot of room there. Give him a couple of yards on the carry. Kind of a little bit of an overcast day it was quite warm yesterday at about this time but much more comfortable today new grass new turf here at Michigan Stadium very very good condition Holcomb is the single back for the Illini they've got double wide now at the bottom of the picture on second down and eight It's a center. I, I mentioned earlier that that Brown, Chris Brown, had moved from tackle to center. Now he was there all spring, so it's not like he just moved him last week. But this is the first time he's been in there in game condition. And I don't know whether he didn't get the ball back far enough, but I think William Carr, number 96, was on his nose and. Sometimes the center would try to get his block too quickly, and I don't know which, you can't tell from whether the center didn't get the ball back far enough or whether the quarterback pulled out a little bit too quickly. Jarrett Iron saw the ball and went underneath. He got it, and it's first down as the Wolverines get a break now. Ball is at the 22-yard line, and there's your first penalty flag, and I think maybe the tight end was moving too soon. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty, it's still first down. Steve Payman is the referee today. Tomorrow night on ABC, Steve Martin in a network television premiere. Sarah Jessica Parker co-starring in L.A. Story. It's part of ABC's Sunday night lineup, starting with America's Funniest Home Videos and Lois and Clark. Tomorrow night on ABC. I hear that L.A. Story is supposed to be really good. Mm. Steve Martin, pretty funny guy. <laughs> Reisbach, looking around, pulls it down, and three big bullets are after it. Penalty flag as his helmet comes off in that Reed space mess. Dreisbach gets out of the pocket like that, Keith. He's going to have to take better care of his body. By new rule this year, the play is dead as soon as the runner's helmet came off. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. That's how it came off. And why it came off because of the face mask. But one of the new rules. Good coverage downfield. Dreisbach with the ability to escape. He's running automatically, right? He tucked the ball away. That's it right there. That's uh, Clark, 48. Yeah, that's, there is no question about that. If you want to... Boy, <laughs> he even took it with him. Oh, boy. It's about a 12-yard penalty. It's an automatic first down. Puts the ball down at the 12-yard line where it's first down for Michigan. And now Williams is a single back. Has the ball, looks into the middle, and nothing doing. 
Eric Gunther anchors the defensive stand right there in the middle of the field and they stop him cold. Gunther is a uh, linebacker, Keith, from California. And, uh, here's, a, here's a wrinkle. You got Woodson in the ball game, who's a cornerback. He's in on offense. Yeah, but Gunther from California, Keith, you mentioned uh, Butkus being at Illinois and all that other stuff. He had idolized Dick Butkus when he was growing up, and maybe someday he'll be on that list. There's Woodson. He's at a wideout. So you've got trips at the top of the picture. Now bring Williams back the other way. Here they come. Blitz is on, and the pass is incomplete. Number 55 just came blowing through there. I mean, he was a runaway train for the Illini. That's famous. Holbert. And everybody says, listen for the name. It's going to ring through the halls. Dreisbach did not look back to his left. He may have thought he had it blocked. But famous Holbert. Mother gave him that name of famous because he was born on Martin Luther King's birthday. He says, hmm, you're going to be famous someday. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, he keeps making tackles like that. The Spartans started big today. Well, I'm sure that... Uh, We'll have a look. Bob and I and our crew, Bob Goodrich, Drew Esikoff, and the whole crowd are all going down to Lincoln to see the Michigan State Spartans against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. There's a look at Hulbert. You know, he had a, a rare muscle disease last year and was out most of the year. They didn't know what it was or how to treat it, and they really don't know what caused it, but he's well this year, and they're going to use him sparingly. From the 13-yard line, pressure coming again. Takes off one. Tries to get the pass away, and he was, if you've ever seen a quarterback under duress, he was under duress. Now, what about the intentional grounding? No, because they had their hands on him. So there is no call in that respect, even though the rules wording has been changed some. And the Illinois defense hunkered down and did the job. Yeah, and they beat up Dreisbach, and he was moving his arm around. That Illinois defense, I mentioned, it is tough and physical. That just went in there and stopped the drive. Remy Hamilton is in. He needs three points for a total of 200 in his career. This is a 29-yard field goal try. Brian Greasy holds it. Block! Michigan down the ball, down at the three. The Illini ran away from the ball instead of picking it up. Michigan covers it. And everybody was standing around looking at it. Well, if it, Mich Illinois blocked it. If it hit an Illinois player after that, it's a free ball. If it didn't touch anybody, it's Defense Illinois' ball. Was pushed into the kick. The kick is no good. First down at the 20. Okay. It'll come out to the 20 for a touchback. You got to be careful, though. There are subtle nuances in the rules these days that can really cost you. He just blocked it coming around the yeah. side. Yeah. yeah. It's Williams, 26. Here's a look from above. James Williams. He just comes around unblocked. Usually if a guy comes around the corner key from that wide where he was, you won't get it. Well, he's already having a pretty good day, James Williams. Four tackles in one block. So the Illini once again come out to their 20-yard line to start a possession. They haven't been able to move it a whole lot yet. Weaver, a little play action, moves it out. Gets away from the pressure, gets back to about the line of scrimmage. And we check in for the first time today with John Saunders in our studio in New York. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. We're going to take you to the ACC. It's Clemson against North Carolina, and one of the best backs in the country, Leon Johnson. Big guy, rumbles this one deep, trying to take it in for the touchdown. Just gets tripped up, and they spotted it to one. He took it in on the next play, 7-0, Carolina. Keith. Okay, John. That guy is a good back. At Johnson, yes, Keith, yes, yep. one of the tops. Just over the 20, call it second down and nine for Illinois. Weaver's pass, good, on the money. It's going to be a first down as it's caught by Holcomb out of the backfield and Robert Holcomb, who turns it upfield in a hurry and gets out to about the 37. So Robert gives him a little daylight. Lou Tepper brought in a new uh, quarterback coach this year, 
Sean Payton came over from Miami of Ohio and has really put some new wrinkles uh, into this uh, Illinois offense. And I, Keith, we're seeing more and more quarterback coaches. There's been a lot of offensive coordinators who coach quarterbacks, but that wasn't their main line. I mean, they were an offensive line coach. There's a lot of quarterback coaches, and the play is improving. This is open. And uh, that doesn't look like a whole lot. It looks like a lot of uh, east-west stuff. But in truth, it's close to five yards. Marcus Ray made the tackle. Weaver is now four for four for 42 yards. And the quarterback spot for the Illini. The defensive secondary for Michigan lost Thompson. Clarence Thompson. Clarence Thompson and a very, very good player, but it's still a very good secondary. Ty Duffer in the backfield. Very close to a first down. Comes up a yard short. So it'll be third and one. Gothard is a senior, 218 pounds, out of Cincinnati. Gothard uh, was a starting fullback last year and went to the coaches and said, hey, I'm, I feel like I'm more a halfback than anything else. So now he's a halfback along with Holcomb. The two of them hold down that position. And we've reached the end of the first quarter. After one, a lot of miscues and mishaps, but no score. <laughs> uh, we'll explain that to you in a minute, folks. Pretty funny. <laughs> We're trying to do a little thing with Lynn Swan out in front of the stadium and get a picture from the blimp. The blimp hit a bump. <laughs> the producer says, look at the camera in the blimp. And he's gone to the chiropractor to get his next fix. <laughs> <laughs> First down for the 48-yard line, handed inside on third down and one, and Robert Holcomb goes to the top of the stack and comes back and did not make it. So let's see about the, uh, the placement of the ball. It's going to be fourth down. He's got to be... Whoa! Wait a minute. Hold the phone. That is not... That is not a first down. That is not, I repeat, a first down. I think they, were looking. I think they were looking over at the, the, the standard that held the down marker rather than the distance to go to the first down. It's, uh, it's going to be fourth down and a good yard, it looks to me like. It's short. At a part of a yard. First quarter stats. There you go. The plays in favor of Michigan. The total yardage is about the same. The one turnover by Illinois did not hurt them on, this, on the quarterback exchange. And the time of possession a little bit in favor of uh, Michigan. Jason Higgins is in the punt. Redshirt freshman out of Normal, Illinois. Chuck Winters is waiting for Michigan, standing back inside the 15. Short kick. Rolling around and gets a good roll. Rolls inside the 15 and dies where the Wolverines will have it. And let's go see if we can find Lynn. Well, I'm, I'm right here, Keith. Uh, the, the football field is... Michigan. This is the first of five proposed new classes. This one is called Plaza. There are eight designated champions with large squares. Their names are in it. And then there are 4,500 bricks around the champions. And exactly which champion your name is around, you'll come in here and find your brick. And the money donated to the university create uh, a, a better environment around the university stadium and to get rid of some of that prison fencing Brick columns and wrought iron fence. Keith? All right, Chris Floyd now lines up with Clarence Williams and drives Buck back to throw the ball. Drills it. Pass is complete for a first down up around the 27 yard line. And making the catch is High Street's number 86. First down for Michigan. Colorado Buffaloes out to a 10 0 lead. 
over Washington State in the second quarter. And Colorado is in Michigan's future at Boulder. Game you'll see here on ABC. Clarence Williams a single back. Double wide now, bottom of the picture. And it's Williams. And about a yard, maybe. Good job by that Illinois defense. Keep just running everything to the side. Nobody gets cut off. Just keep it flow. The defensive line, Marshall and Johnson and Connor and Brown up front. Just uh, doing a nice job so those linebackers can make the tackles. This defense is set up for the linebackers, Keith, and that's why they've had so much success over the years at linebacker. Dennis Stallings is the bell cow that much right now. Second down, nine. Floyd, the single back, drives Buck Massey. Gets a little opening and takes off. And he's got a first down, and he, if he's got the speed, can go. He's got the speed. It's touchdown, Michigan. Seventy-two yard touchdown run from an unlikely source. The quarterback on a scramble and high streets through the last block to clear the way. I'm sure Lou Tepper didn't know much about him, he, although he did play against Dreisbach in the first game last year. He didn't pull enough any long runs like that for touchdowns in the films that he'd seen. Hamilton for the extra point. Thirteen oh one to go in the first half, and Michigan takes the lead over Illinois seven to nothing. Quarterback that can run is a big, big plus for your offense. Watches the center of the line is going to open up. Forty six is Stallings, the leading tackler on this team. He's got the best shot right there. Dreisbach will break three tackles. There's one right there. It's a quarterback number two, and the third one right there. Just poor tackling by Illinois and a nice job of running by Dreisbach. Yeah, Toriano Woods tried to get an arm tackle and he just couldn't handle it. The longest Michigan run last year was 60 yards by Bianca Batuka. Ready for the kickoff, Jay Feely will hit it for the Wolverines. George McDonald has first it. Wilbert Smith, number two, waiting for it. It's McDonald after it. And he's got a little room. And runs over one man at the 30 and comes on out to the 35. Jay Feely finally brought him down. So that's a very good return by McDonald Ashford. Next Saturday, college football doubleheader here on ABC Sports at noon Eastern. Most of you will see Michigan State against number one Nebraska. Then at 3.30 Eastern, Illinois will host USC, Louisville meets Penn State, and there's other regional action. Check your local listings for the game on your ABC station, or check your cable operator to see what his menu might be. The schedule maker wasn't kind to U.S. Uh, to uh, Illinois. No, sir. You had Michigan, and then USC, and then Arizona. This is the best starting point for an Illinois possession. Here's Weaver getting pressure and throws it into the ground. Was over there, but there were people all around him, and uh, I think maybe Scott Weaver sort of cleverly put that ball down this where nobody close. could get it. It's the close about the. We got a new rule this year. If we could, if we could see that again, it's a screen play with the screen man was not open, and the quarterback just kind of throws it into the ground. The, the rule is you have to be under pressure, and the ball has to be catchable. He was under pressure a little bit, and it wasn't, it's, it's, it's the judgment of the referee, and I think that was all right letting yeah. it slide well, by. Well, see, Dalford was facing him, too, so he right. dived, could have got his ankle. That's Robert Holm, uh, Holcomb carrying the ball and picking up about three yards. He got away from William Carr, the nose tackle, number 96 for Michigan. If they get down in a goal line offense circumstance, you probably see William Carr at 287 pounds line up in the elephant backfield. <laughs> Michigan Michigan defensively they did well in the Big Ten and nationally they were ranked third against the run 
Scott Weaver, before that inter that incompletion on the screen, was 4-4 four four for 42 yards. Go to the shotgun now. Trying to get something started. Third down and seven. Has time. Passes away. Here's go. Oh, it's not intercepted. There's a penalty flag, however, coming from the guardian on the sideline. Chuck Winters was the Michigan man who almost had the interception. Steve Feynman, the referee. Don Langlow, the line judge. Umpire is Jim Buzowski. Linesman is Dennis Gettle. Pass interference. Defense. Spot foul. Automatic first down. Bob Colburn is the line field judge. Side judge is Norm Nelson. He's the man that threw the flag. And the back judge is Jim Lapatina. It was from behind the defense. That's Woodson number two. A little early. Well, you know, early. Winters was inside of him intercepting the ball. The ball is never going to get the... To... Check the rule book on that one. <laughs> That was a uh, poor throw, anyway, by um, by Weaver. First down, up at the 46-yard line. Dollar almost dropped the handoff and takes a licking from Wolverines as he is dropped inside the 42. There's big old William Carr, six-footer, 287-pound senior from Carter High School in Dallas, Texas. Call him the Dancing Bear. He started. Uh, the last couple of years, six foot and 287 pounds, and he's quick. He can move. He's playing right over the uh, the center. Second down and a long 14, close to 15. Passes away to the sideline to the tight end Matt Cushing, and Cushing will get it back to the Michigan side about the 48. And let's find out what's shaking between the Buffaloes and the Cougars. Here's John Saunders. Well, Keith, the Cougars are having a tough time controlling the Buffs right now. Coy Detmer rolls out to his right, tosses the pass to James Kidd, fights off a couple of tackles, gets it in. Detmer has also run one in for a touchdown, and right now the Buffs leading 17-0. Keith, back to you. Colorado could be a very, very good football team. Well, Michigan goes out there, talking about the tough schedules, Michigan yep. goes out to Colorado in a couple yep. of weeks. Right. Ty Dothard lines up, number seven, deep man in the backfield, Weaver's pass. One of those long throws to the sidelines, and it may be just beyond the marker for the first down. That's a long throw to pick up about uh, five yards. But it's picking up a first down, Keith, and that's the key. Yep. You that got... ball hangs out there on that pattern, though. You've got to hold your breath a well, little bit. Yeah, but you have to have confidence that you're, you're, you're going to complete it. And, and uh, Paul Shadell, the offensive coordinator, knows that the, it's out there. He's got confidence in Weaver and his receiver, and he picks up a first down. That's Dothard's carry. And he's inside the 40. Put it on the 39-yard line with 10 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half. Michigan leading Illinois on a 72-yard touchdown run by the quarterback, Dreisbach. Seven to nothing. That came with 13.01 to play in the first half. He looked pretty good doing it, too, didn't he? Looked like a, looked like a back. Broke a couple of tackles. Second down and six now. It's Dothard. Two yards. So it'll be third and four for the Illini. This offense, Keith, we mentioned that how, it, how it did last year. It didn't do very well in the Big Ten or in the nation. Uh, got better as the year progressed. And toward the end of the year, it was coming around. Marcus Mosley has come in now at the split end position, number five. Rob Majoy comes in also. Dothard goes out. Holcomb comes back. So they're, they're spot substituting here, trying to find the people to produce themselves the first down. The third down at about five. Weaver, pressure, gets it away. He's got a man, but he's hit just as he delivered the ball, and the ball goes over the head of Marcus Mosley. I mean, the pressure came. 37 irons and number 90 for Michigan came pounding in. Joaquin Fizel. They like him very much. He is a sophomore 
out of Fort Valley, Georgia. But it was iron, Keith, and it was a mix-up in the offensive line as to who was supposed to pick up the blitzing linebacker. If, uh, if Scott would have had a little bit more time to throw that ball, maybe he could have had something at the other end. Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't know where Jarrett Irons is, yeah. you're in for a hard well, that's day. That's the one guy I was, yes, I was fine when I get up to the line of scrimmage. Got to know where he is. The punt is away by Higgins. And it takes an Illinois bounce. And it's down at the Michigan 3, where the Wolverines will have it, leading by a score of 7 to nothing. College football continues tonight on ESPN. Pitt looks to avenge a loss last year, a 21-0 defeat for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Well, that's an old neighborhood battle. I have seen some great games between those two, and I'll bet you this one tonight will be one of them. A roaring 7.30 on ESPN as the Michigan Wolverines now try to wedge the ball out, get a little breathing room. Clarence Williams carrying there. Dennis Stallings making the tackle for Illinois. Here's a look at Chris Kosh, the defensive coordinator. Last year, he was the assistant head coach. I asked um, Lou Tepper, why did he switch he and Denny Marson, who was the defensive coordinator? He said, well, he said some pro teams were after both of these guys, and he felt like he could, if he changed their, their positions, he could advance them in salary and in uh, stature, and he wanted to keep them both, and they're doing a good job. All is fumbled into the end zone and covered by the Wolverines, but it's two points for Illinois. Reisbach covered the loose football after Williams lost control of it. He's tackled in the end zone, and it's two for the Illini. I think it was uh, Brown that caused the fumble, too, as you see Kosh going down to congratulate his troops. And 99 was the one, I think, that got his arm and hand in there and busted it loose. Well, this defense, no question, sets the tone for this uh, football ball club. So it's a 7-2 ball game at 8-11 to play in the first half. Take a look. Michigan just trying to get out from the shadow of its own end zone. That's Gwines, number 75. It's taking some time to get around, clogging up the hole. There's Brown there knocking it out. Dreisbach does a smart thing and just trying to get on the football. Yeah, it could very well have been a touchdown if he doesn't just cover it. Start trying to scoop it up, it gets away. That's 51 Denson that's trying to pull around there. Nice job of stuffing up the hole. The ball comes out from... Uh, from uh, Williams. Good job by Brown. He's taking the place, uh, plays the same position as Simeon Rice did last year. Paul Peristeris in now to punt the ball from the 20 after the safety. And it's Marcus Mosley and Ryan Moore deep for Illinois. And it is Mosley. Pops outside, got some daylight. Almost had a lot of daylight. He goes all the way down to the Michigan 35-yard line. And old Mo right now looks like he might be wearing a white shirt. Mosley, a wide receiver, and does a nice job. Now, Michigan's returned co special team coverage, we said earlier, has been not that good in the last few years. Good blocking up front. There's a space to the right side right here. Mosley's going to take it to the outside and good field position for the Illini to start this drive. There's seven Wolverines right in the middle of the field. Yeah. They, you, I don't know what it is, but, but lately, as I see the Michigan games, there are special teams, the coverages and the kickoffs just, just aren't there. Put it on the 36th, first down with Holcomb and Douthard lined up in the backfield. And it is Holcomb. Just powers ahead for close to four yards. One of America's most enduring corporate images, the Goodyear blimp floating overhead today, providing our aerial views for today's game. There it is. It was up a lot yesterday. I had a ride in that about five, four, five years ago. You know how many guys it takes to, uh, to do that whole operation, that little blimp? Not exactly. About 17. I was talking to one of the guys the other day. In a, in a lot. Got a pretty fancy bus. Right in that Holcomb inside the 30, down to the 29. Got to go to the 26, so they'll need the better part of three yards on third down. 
Holcomb is not fancy. He's six feet, he's 215 pounds, and he's willing. He gets it done. Rodney Bird, uh, who lines up some at the fullback position for Illinois, is another one of those huge guys. He's 252 pounds. In the backfield. Yep, he's mainly a blocker, Bird is. Uh, he's carried the ball not very often, but he's a captain. He's a leader. This is Dothert. And he's going to have his first down at the 25. So the Illini moving the football to a first down at the Michigan 25-yard line. In fact, Rodney Bird got a nice block on that play. Talk about some of these guys that carry the ball. What about all the guys that do all the blocking and the, the tough jobs? And Rodney Bird uh, is a crucial man for the Illini. We, we put him over there in the corner. <laughs> you can see, so he's relatively harmless over there. <laughs> it's also warm enough to have a fan Whew. today. What muggy? There's, there's Bird. There's Bird. <laughs> Pressure coming from the back side. The pass is away. And number 83 came back and saved his quarterback's life, I think. Jason Dulick saw that one of the Wolverines had a clean shot at his quarterback. Marcus Ray, I mean, there's nobody around, so Dulick peels back and picks him off. Here's what you're talking about, Keith. Here's one of the corners that's going to come in and blitz. Dulick is here, and on the fake reverse, he's going to block on the backside. Little fake into the line. Dulick comes back and says, oh, there you are. Boy, if he doesn't get him, the bells would be ringing. Timeout, 6.17 to go in the first half. 7-2, to two, Michigan leading and Illinois threatening. Well, the first game of the season is not just the first game of the season, but it's also the weekend for moving in on campus. And this week, the dorms opened up, everybody moved in. But keep in mind, the football team that's been here since the middle of August, all the incoming freshmen had to take a little time away from practice, get all their gear and move in at the same time. Now they're situated and they're ready for some fun. Keith? Oh, you think they're situated, huh? <laughs> well, somewhat, Keith. They haven't been to the bookstore yet. <laughs> mm. that's, that's quite a moment in the young life, I'll tell you. There's a man that moved his daughter into uh, her dorm room this Wednesday. I was talking to Lou, and he says the daughter, freshman at Illinois, wanted him to move her in himself, and he took time off to get over Stacy and moved her in. And it's something special. Second down and 10. This is Holcomb. He's got some room. And a penalty flag is thrown as Holcomb fights his way down to about the four-yard line. That's a nice throw by Scott Weaver. Where's the flag? Just a little touch. May come back. Yep. So the Illini make a mistake. Well, you, you don't get many good plays like that on offense when you're struggling, and, and, and Lou knows that they are. When you make a play, you've gotta, you can't pull, hurt yourself. You just can't stop yourself. That's a 12-yard penalty. There's a look. He's going to throw the ball over number 24, Blackwell. This is a nice touch. Under pressure. Nice touch. I think maybe it was the tight end down blocking right there. That's the tight end Cushing, number 86. Yeah, we think. We're not sure, but that's we couldn't see anything else. But uh, yeah, He was trying to hold when, on to Sam Sword there. Yes, he had him with the shirt sleeve. When you're, yeah, but when you're on the road, Keith, and your offense is struggling and you do hit a big play, it's a killer when somebody makes a mistake. Just short of the 36-yard line, second down and 21. And a little bit of draw action with Cowder carrying the ball up the middle, and he runs it back inside the 25 to the 23. So they'll be looking at third down and about eight. It's good ball handling between uh, Weaver and Douthert. Will draw get some of that yardage back? Douthert uh, came into the season with 103 career receptions. That's averaging 34 receptions a year. He catches a lot of ball. Douthert is the single back right now. He has the ball. 
turns it back into traffic. And the Wolverines take him down at the 20. This obviously a conference game in the Big Ten, an ungainly sort of a time of the year to be playing an old foe in a conference counter, but you have to do it with the imbalance of the 11 teams trying to schedule everybody around. Middle linebacker slides down the line, avoids the block. You always have to avoid a block. There's always going to be somebody assigned to block you. Brett Schuflein. 10 out of 19 with a long of 51 a year ago. The junior from Coral Springs, Florida. This is a 38-yard try out of the hold of Scott Weaver. It's good. Four forty-eight remaining in the first half. And we're waiting for the next relief pitcher. Our score <laughs> is seven to five. Let's spend a moment with John Saunders in New York. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, we'll have the scores and highlights. Plus, I'll be joined by my new partner, Todd Blackledge, who's breaking down tape already as we speak, and he'll have a closer look at the top five. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. This new turf uh, they put in here at uh, Michigan Stadium, it's just tremendous. There, I don't see a scar anywhere. Really holding up well in the first game action reason they had to replace it was because of a game that was played here last year the Purdue game in fact when it just it was just poured the snow and rain and they just tore this field up well the the legal department and the insurance company came and said if you don't do something somebody is going to drown in the end zone <laughs> the insurance company demands that you change it and they did that's not true but the, it was deep enough my lord what a mess that was not a pretty game, Keith. The offenses are not doing well, struggling, going back and forth. Seven to five, uh, we've had uh, safety. We've had uh, kicks blocked and uh, fumbled snap. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's just the way it is. When you got two tough-nosed defensive teams from last year coming into the game and a lot of new people on offense, Illinois and uh, Michigan both new in the skill places, positions, and. Uh, not pretty. Schuplein kicking off. Winters and Butterfield waiting for it. Driving through the end zone and beyond the field of play. It'll come out to the 20 first down. Tomorrow, don't miss the final round of the Greater Milwaukee Open presented by Miller Lite. Yes, Perponovic of Sweden leads the pack. He's tearing him up. In his professional debut, Tiger Woods shot 73 today. He's now four under. Our coverage begins at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and Pacific here on ABC Sports tomorrow. Steve Stricker having a pretty good tournament again. He's 14 under. Boy, he can whack it. You Ooh. like that kid, I know. Oh, uh, yeah, I think he's a terrific player. How about what Tiger Woods did? Wasn't that outstanding? Just three straight amateur champions after he'd won the junior amateur, what, three times in a yeah, row? Yeah, but Parnovic or Henke or whoever winds up winning this, or Lauren Roberts, they're going to win it, take the big check home, and nobody's good. <laughs> nobody's going to know that they won it. It was Woods' first tournament. The penalty flag is flying around. Trevor Sturgill and Ty Streets were tangled up. Pass interference. Defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. Interference, it's got to be a catchable ball, and there's got to be contact, or has to impede the process, is a path to the ball. There's the uh, protection. The ball is thrown down. And I couldn't see if there was contact there before or not, but... Um, Williams and Floyd in the backfield now on the 35-yard line. It goes to Williams, and that's a yard. That'll do it. The middle of the Illinois defense is tough. They do not give you anything in the middle. And the main reason is the presence of Stallings and Gunther behind the big nose tackle, Paul Marshall. And we've got a man shaken up on the play and timeout called for the injured player by Illinois. Looks like Garrett Johnson, 66, it is. So he'll leave. And he's one of those guys in the middle of that line, Keith. He and Marshall, Paul Marshall, 
Lou was saying this week that they're very thin along the defensive line. And, uh, you know, a lot of teams are thin uh, backups, Keith. With the 85 scholarship yep. rule this year, not many teams are, are hitting in practice because they're afraid that they're going to get players hurt. Mike McGee, number 85, replaces him at that defensive end position. Second down, nine. Bryce Buck gives the ball to Williams, and he hands the ball away to Woodson. And Woodson, who's a burner, foot race down the sideline. And they finally get him out of bounds. They got him out at the seven-yard line. James Williams saved the touchdown. Woodson, the cornerback, slipped into the offensive lineup and made the big play on a reverse. 57 yards. But Woodson, as you know, is a, is a corner, defensive back. Here he is out here. He's going to come back around on the reverse. He's only in there for certain plays. In the spring, he worked some as a wide receiver. But stop it right here. Look at, look at the hole that he's got to run through. Right in here, the block is made on the outside. Little speed on the uh, on the player and good field position for Michigan. First and goal from the seven yard line. Williams to the five. Pirates Williams. Time remaining three minutes and fifty seconds of the first half. Michigan seven, Illinois five. Those types of plays, Keith, you can use the first game of the year because. Nobody has seen your, your films this year, and you've been working on a lot of new plays, some things in the spring and some this, uh, this summer. But after two or three games, when, when Woodson comes into the game, they'll look for the reverse. Woodson's not a gimme. He's 197 pounds. He can whack you with some authority. Second down and goal from the five. Dreisbach stands up and throws into the corner, and it is incomplete. The pass was intended for Woodson. But the, the defender, James Williams, did not yield. Woodson ran into him, and uh, there's no flag. There's no foul. Well, here's a look. Woodson and the, the defensive back, William, one-on-one. -on -one. Makes a move to the inside. He throws the ball early. And the ball is in the air. So the ball was way out of bounds. Maybe that's what he's looking at. Yep. Third and goal from the five. In other words, William Carr in that elephant backfield. I thought we'd see them somewhere in this neighborhood. I guess it's got to be inside the five, huh? There it is. Clarence Williams takes it into the end zone. And a penalty flag is thrown by the referee behind the play. I think there was movement. That'll come back. Yeah, I think Michigan was moving, Keith. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty, it's still third down. Lloyd Carr wants to know who you know, it was on. I, I don't know if anybody moves or if, if the ball was just snapped early and, and nobody else moved. Let's take a, take a look at it. Watch it. I think the ball is snapped. Go ahead and run it. They say it was on the center, but the center can snap the ball anytime he wants. It looks like he may have snapped it soon, and then nobody else moved, but the center snaps the ball. Yeah, well, maybe the center moved his body. Maybe that was it. All right. On third down, Dreisbach getting some heat. Throws it. Incomplete. Intended for Ty Streets. He didn't have a chance to look back because he had Williams and Woodson both available to him, but he was running for his life as the pursuit was coming from Ramil Connor, and so he throws it incomplete. Well, there was just good coverage, Keith. Yep. He had nobody to throw it yep. to. That and the threat of losing your life. <laughs> Remy Hamilton is on the field now. It'll be a 27-yard field goal try. He had one blocked earlier today. This will put him over 200 points in his career. It's good. And it goes to a 10-5 ball game. And let's spend a moment with Lynn Swan. 
will keep Garrett Johnson number 66. Uh, you saw him helped off the field. A bit of a sprained ankle. They just retaped it. He's on the sideline now, walking it off. Tried to rush down there in before the field goal was kicked to see if he could get in, but he will be back in the ball game. Keith? That's good. His dad was also a defensive lineman at uh, Illinois. He's an ex-linebacker uh, who uh, ate himself into being a defensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun to go that way rather than go the other way when you have to diet. Stroganoff and biscuits, nothing like it. Mm, I remember those days. Lord, <laughs> they were fun. <laughs> they were My fun. My goodness, they were fun. <laughs> All right, Michigan's field goal makes it a 10-5 to ball game, and the Wolverines will kick it. Going deep for the Illini. After uh, Jay Feely's punt will be George McDonald Ashford, a sophomore at a point of Park, California, and Wilbert Smith who is a tailback. Neither team, Keith, is finishing off their drives, their offense. When they get an opportunity, they're, 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 they're bogging down offensively and having to settle for field goals. Sidewinder pops it. Ball comes to McDonald Ashford. Coming from the eight. And comes up to the 29. Again, there was a hole in the middle of the field. If he could have popped that thing one more step to get to the outside, he'd have had a lot of room. But he didn't. So the Illini go to work with 2.59 to play in the first half. The advantage, the advantage of huddling on the, on the sideline here, Keith, is that the defense doesn't know the personnel that you're coming out with. So Illinois is coming out from the, from the bench area and just going to present their formation. Three wide receivers. Charles Woodson's playing the field side at the cornerback position. They go the other way with the ball. Complete the pass for Jason Dulick. And he'll pick up seven, maybe eight yards. Woody Hankins at 5'9", 190, plays the uh, boundary side at corner. Good, steady player. Marcus Ray is your strong safety. And Adrian Taylor has won the free safety starting assignment for this ball game over Chuck Winters. So both have been playing a lot. It is Holcomb and Douthert set in the backfield now for the Illini. Give the ball to Douthert. And he's got a first down. Put the ball at the 44-yard line before Marcus Ray out of Columbus, Ohio makes the tackle. Get some depth in that secondary for the Wolverines. You mentioned Woody Hankins. Uh, talking about him yesterday with Greg Madison the defensive coordinator and he likes his intelligence and because he's smart he says he's an engineering major so he better be one of the brightest guys out there on the field Weaver back has time hits his man right on the numbers that's Rodney Bird out of the backfield the fullback and he crosses midfield and gets it down to about the 49 of Michigan and you've got a minute and 59 seconds to play in the first half a 10-5 lead, Michigan over Illinois. A lot of teams, and Illinois included, are going to the quick passing game. Three-step, five-step drop. It avoids uh, the sacks. You throw the ball quickly. You move the ball, throw it to your backs a lot. And uh, that's the thing that Paul Shadell and, and Sean Payton brought in with him from uh, Miami of Ohio. Got this team doing it. Looks good. Holcomb trying for the first down and he is close. And that's a good spot. The official went in and just left the ball right exactly where it was in his arms. Timeouts remaining. Both have two. Change will come for the measurement here. Illinois' next game against Southern California at home. Michigan looking down the road to Boulder. Close, just a tick short. Does he go? 149 to play in the first half. There's the schedule. September 7, they play USC, and then they go to Arizona. Akron comes to Champaign. Dave Bernson wistfully advises me it's pork day, and he won't be there. <laughs> oh, boy, do I remember the pork days in Champaign. Oh, 
You know, there's certain things about college football that you love, and Fork Day was one of them. <laughs> that can contribute to making you a deep <laughs> offensive lineman, too, you know. <laughs> it's up there often. Maybe Johnson bit something in those Fork Days. <laughs> 47 yard line, third down and six inches. We would drop the ball off the snap, but picks it up and gets his first down. My goodness, he almost turned that thing over. But he controlled it, and it's first down the Illini. The ball at the Michigan 46. Here's a good look. Speaking of pork, slick. Never got it. Nope. Either that ball slipped out of the center's hand. And Weaver did a nice job of improvising, just saying, hey, I didn't get it, but I only need a half a yard. Pick it up and pick it up. First down. Brown, the new center, as we mentioned, it's going to take him a while to adjust to game conditions. Inside a minute and a half now on first down at the Michigan uh, 46. Down third. Lined up in the backfield with Weaver out of the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. Steps away from it. Winters is after him now. Gets his pass away. It is incomplete. Dothard, number seven, had it on his hands and couldn't make the hit. Good job that Dothard didn't catch it because he would have lost seven yards because he was seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Clint Copenhaver was the first man to flush him, and then he saw Chuck Winters coming. And it goes incomplete. Ten to five ball game, unusual kind of a score. Minute 14 to play, first half. Yeah, if, if you're an offensive coach or player, you don't like those numbers, Keith, but when you when you stop to say, well, it's the first game of the year and it's against the two best defenses of, in the Big Ten from last year, that's what you're seeing here. Dothard, and a little daylight, goes to the 40. And now the 39. Number 37, 43, that's Irons and Copenhaver. And the Buffaloes now. Detmer, he's having a big day. He started big last year and then got hurt. But yeah. he's such a daredevil, you know. Well, and they've got such good wide receivers, Keith. And they, their scheme is, is very similar to the University of Florida, where you spread them out, and if your quarterback makes the plays, you've got great speed out there to hit them. Well, I'm sure that Rick Neuheisel would be very happy if Detmer would just go out there and, and throw the ball. But uh, he likes to run it once in a while. And, yeah. And show off a little bit, I think. Well, that's how he got hurt the last time. That's right. 55 seconds remaining. Michigan State opening big today against Purdue and Nebraska waiting for them next week in Lincoln. We'll be looking forward to that. I'd like to see Nebraska. You know, uh, I don't know if Terrell Farley is going to play or not. I guess he was suspended today for indefinitely. Yep. Miami lost a couple of guys, or they were post their return postponed, and Clemson lost one. Trevor Price, who used to be here at Michigan, was booted down at Clemson. So there, Miami opens today with trouble. Memphis and Danielle Ferguson and Yatiel Green, two of their top players, uh, were suspended by the school. Status is unknown for next week's game. Thankfully, uh, people do do insist that you behave yourself. They won handily over Memphis. Butch Davis balancing a handful of hot rocks down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right, Keith. <laughs> and that's a nice way to put it. But I think he's going to survive that thing. And if, and if he does, and he has enough depth, look out, because they could be good. Third down and four. Weaver's pass complete. And it's the tight end Cushing. His 251 pounds. He is able to muscle his way down for a first down. To put the ball inside the 35. And move the chain. Well, Michigan was blitzing. Here these two linebackers are going to blitz. Cushing is here coming out. And the guy that has to cover him is the safety lined up way deep. This is a good uh, read by Weaver. If I can clear the telestrator. There you go. Kick it. Watch the linebackers blitz. Nice quick read by uh, Weaver. And if Cushing can break a tackle, he can make a big play. 33-yard line pressure coming. Pass is thrown quickly, completed to Mosley. And Marcus Mosley will have eight yards on the play. So Weaver got rid of that thing in a hurry. And right on the numbers. Clock is running 35 seconds. 10 to 5. Michigan leading. 
Alino, Illini uh, with a touchdown obviously would take the lead. Field goal pulls them close. Weavers 10 out of 14 for 88 yards. Working here out of the shotgun. The ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage. Pass intended. Let me show you what the newest fad is in, 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 uh, in college football defenses, Keith. Uh, look here, the defensive line for Michigan right in here. There are three guys that are going to pull out and go cover. And the outside guys, the linebackers, are going to blitz. Watch the inside interior of that line of Michigan. They all three pull out, and they're going back into coverage. The outside guys that were lined up, the linebackers, are blitzing. So one of the new things in college football, are they call it fire blitzes or sugar zones or sugar blitzes. you got to be careful when you throw the football. On third down and three, give the ball to Holcomb, and he'll have a first down of the 20. And that stops your clock at 12 seconds to play in the first half. Move the chains. And Illinois calls time. That's the last one. And with only 12 seconds to go, probably won't matter all that much. So let's check in with Swanee. Well, Keith, you know, you got to love this drive by Illinois. A very good, competent drive. They work the clock. They move the ball down the field. Not trying to go for a whole lot on any one particular play, using the amount of time they have on the clock. But now with 12 seconds to go, I think they use that last play to get the ball in position for a field goal. But now they've got to really take a chance here. I think they need to, have to take the ball, put it in the end zone, try and get the touchdown. If they don't get it, if the play is taking too long, get rid of the football and bring your special. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You're talking like a quarterback here. What is this? <laughs> well, sometimes we wide receivers do have to grow into the backfield. I guess, I guess you, you're suggesting lining up a couple of wide receivers and, and then throwing one down to a wide receiver deep in the end zone. Well, you, yeah. If you hit it, fine. And if not, then you come back and kick the field goal. You in come the meantime, back all of us old big uglies are just hunkered down hoping you thinkers will make the play. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of people watch a drive like this, Bob, and they say 18 uh, seconds on the clock. Why'd they put it in the middle field? Why didn't they go in the end zone? Yeah, Lenny, I like your thinking. If you weren't a wide receiver, I think I'd agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's what they should do. I, I, mean, I appreciate you, what I think was a compliment. If you, if you, and if you got a trick play right here, try the trick play. Yeah, they want to see what kind of alignment they're coming out in. I, I think you should, you know, if you, if you got something, take, throw it into the end zone because you got to make sure you stop the clock because you have no more timeouts left. But, that's right. And then come back and kick it. But you know, it's it. But you're dealing, Keith, with with 18, 19, 20 year old kids, and, and this is the first game of the year. And maybe you don't want to do all that stuff. Maybe you're not ready for that stuff. Maybe you'll say, all right, from from Illinois side of the field, you say, hey, let's just go out and try the field goal. We don't want to mess with our field goal kicker. Let's just go kick it. Wake me up when you're through, will you? <laughs> <laughs> There's the schedule for Michigan at Colorado on the 14th, the game that we'll have for you on ABC. Also, the Boston College game will be seen on ABC. UCLA comes in here. Look out for that. I'm just, I'm just, just a little note to you. Then they play at Northwestern. You can see that uh, there are two Big Ten teams missing from the, the Michigan schedule in, in, in the entire conference. Every team does not play uh, two teams because of the scheduling problems that goes with 11 teams in the Big Ten. And you have to keep some of those uh, dates available for non-conference games. Michigan this year will not play Iowa nor Wisconsin. All right, here's your field goal try of 37 yards by Brett Schuflein. He's hit from 38. He has missed from 37. So after all of that brain trusting on the sidelines, they decide to go ahead for the field goal uh, with 10 sec 12 seconds to play. Did not throw it into the end zone, and they come away with no points. Hold was good. The snap was good. Just a little to the right. And the Wolverines will get a snap from their 20. Schuplein came into the season. He's a third year junior. Came in making 10 of 17 on his career. They run out the clock as Dreisbach puts a knee down off the snap and they'll go to the clubhouse with his score at halftime. Michigan 10 and the University of Illinois 5. 
Not something you'd want to package up for Christmas, but it is the opening conference game. And the Wolverines at home are leading. Time score at Michigan Stadium, Wolverines 10, Illinois 5. Uh, the highlights of the first half will not delay supper. The first sparkling moment came when Dreisbach, the Michigan quarterback, wiggled his way through traffic and suddenly got free and route ran everybody to the end zone for the touchdown and the only touchdown in the first half. The defensive coordinators, Keith, for Illinois cannot be happy with the poor tackling against the quarterback, let alone a running back, but you let a quarterback beat you for a touchdown, that's unforgivable. Covered 72 yards on the play. Illinois' first points came when Michigan's Williams fumbled at the five. Ball came rolling back toward the end zone, rolled into the end zone. Dreisbach covered it for a safety for the Illini, seven to two. And then Charles Woodson, playing at a flanker position, comes around on a reverse, gets some great blocking, turns on the speed, goes 57 yards. That sets up the Michigan field goal. Illinois countered with a field goal, and that's where we are at 10 to 5, halftime. And it's the same question starting the second half, the start of the ball game. Where do these teams find some offense? Well, for Michigan, we said that uh, a lot of new inexperienced players at the skill positions. Uh, Dreisbach is the leading rusher. That question has not been answered. For Illinois, the offensive line uh, is, is still has not come together. Uh, Weaver is doing what he can, but uh, no turnovers on his part. He's had some exchange problems with the center, but again, first game of the year, the defenses are a little bit ahead, and uh, it's hope there'll be more offense in the second half. Michigan's Spiele kicks off. McDonald Ashford waits for it, takes it a yard deep in the end zone, and he's coming out with it. And he's got one block, two blocks, still going 20-21, up to the 22. So he took a couple of pretty good licks and held on to the ball, and here's some halftime numbers. So look at the halftime, uh, the numbers, you know, it's not... Nothing grabs you there. The first downs are about the same. The total yardage, little in favor of Michigan. The thing you do not see there, the one turnover for Illinois did not lead to any points. Time of possession for Illinois a little bit, but you don't see on there is the fumble in the end zone by Michigan that gave the uh, safety. But you just saw that on the highlights. Illinois starts out with Holcomb and Bird lined up behind uh, Weaver, and Weaver will throw on the first play of the second half to the sidelines to Bird out of the backfield. And the big fullback gets about seven yards off the play. Moment now with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, I talked with Lou Tepper, and he was not happy with the defensive play, as Bob pointed out. Felt that the defense didn't make the right adjustments in the first half of the ball game. They needed to be better in the second half. On offense, he just felt the short yardage unit didn't have the consistency and keep the ball moving on the drive. He wants to change that. I asked him about the field goal also. He said, if we had a timeout, I would have gone for the touchdown, but he thought he had three points for sure. Keith? All right, second down, three. That's a pretty good hit, but they don't take Holcomb down. Uh, he will, however, lose a little bit on the play. But that was good, strong penetration by Glenn Steele. Pounding in there. Brent Blackwell got a piece of that action as well, number 24. Here's Illinois, first half offensive leaders. Weaver has no interceptions, 88 yards. Douthard uh, and Holcomb, uh, the rushing, and Cushing with three receptions leads the receivers. Third down and a long three. Out of the shotgun. Completes the pass to Dulick, and Jason will get the first down. He took the ball on the numbers and took the lick at the same time and made the play. Good play, good throw. First half possessions for Illinois. They had the ball six times, fumbled on their second possession. That did not hurt them. It didn't really lead to any points. And then the last two possessions, they got something going. Seven plays and a field goal, and then 12 plays, and then missed the field goal. Ty Dothert is in the ball game now for Illinois in the backfield along with Holcomb. 
And it's first down from the 35. Weaver rolls out, pressure down, intended for Mulek, and the ball is behind him. Glenn Steele, number 81, was the man out in the face of the Illinois quarterback Weaver, but he got the ball away, but just behind his Steele intended said receiver. Had some back problems, Keith. Uh, in fact, uh, he didn't know how much he was going to be able to play. He's got a disc in there, but Michigan needs him. He is a top defensive lineman. Second and ten. Mosley will be way down wide at the bottom of the picture there. This is Dothert. Oh, there's a lot of Wolverines out there waiting for him. Number 93, Sam Sword was the first one. A sophomore from Saginaw. Turian and I drove across Saginaw County the other day, and it's just a gorgeous hunk of earth. Really beautiful farmland up through there. Do you have any golf courses over there? Ah, uh, some. <laughs> 37-yard line, third down and eight. I didn't make it with a good one. <laughs> Just starting the third quarter of play. And Weaver is sacked. The ball comes out. He's going to be down. No fumble. He's down at the 27. The referee, Steve Payman, right there. Well, you got the blitz on the outside again. And they're going to get to the attention comes from the outside. The guys in the middle drop off. That's that sugar blitz. All three of the defensive linemen drop out of there. The blitzers come from the outside, and they, what happens is the inside offensive linemen end up blocking nobody. All right, Michigan's defense trying to give the offense good field position as Higgins comes in to punt. This is Chuck Winter circling under it at the 35. And 44. So a nine-yard return off a 38-yard punt. And Michigan will have very good field position for their first possession of the second half. Michigan ball, call it the 45-yard line, first down. Drives back, looking to throw, goes big. He's aired it out for Shaw, and it's incomplete. Number four, Russell Shaw, the junior college graduate from El Camino City College in Torrance, California. Got a hand on it, but was defended well. Let's go back to that last Illinois possession in the last play before the punt. The little blitz. Number six is Bowens. Nobody is touches him. Watch the uh, this ball comes out. Clearly a fumble. Clearly a fumble. Second down and ten. This is Chris Floyd. And one yard. But you know, in Michigan, as we take a look at their first half stats, Dreisbach was 5 of 12 throwing the ball, but rushing is where he did the damage. 81 yards and a touchdown. Williams only had 12 rushings, 12 rushings rushes for 14 yards. He was the running back. Tuman led him in receiving, and Woodson, the reverse there for 57 yards on the ground. Um, Dreisbach and Woodson did all the damage on the ground, and the running back didn't do much at all. Third down now and nine. Pursuing flag on the play, and it'll be a late hit. It's got to be driving up. Driving Lou uh, crazy to see that. Just stop him on third down. There was nobody open downfield. If you look upfield, you're not going to see any black shirts that are open. So he just goes ahead and runs out. I don't know, Keith. I, I, I can't see. Can we see it from above? Well, he was still on the field of play. Well, I, I don't think. know if he was out of bounds but or whether he was the still. The shove was what yeah. did it. He didn't need to shove him, I guess. Yeah, here, the it's, it's, 
if he hits him before he gets to the out of bounds, oh, it's all right. Right there. Uh, that's, it was, it was that's, the shove. Yeah, that's, I don't know. That's, I think that's a close call. It doesn't look good when he goes out, but he made the initial contact. He was still in bounds. Yep. He doesn't push him, doesn't shove him. Uh, he, well, he, that's what defensive ball. guys want to do. They want to yeah. hit, especially right. quarterbacks. Yeah. Ball comes to the 38-yard line, and this is Williams exploding over the left side, down inside the 30, and I think somebody said to Clarence, rev it up, lad, rev it up. Michigan uh, possessions in the first half. Uh, they punted the ball twice and then missed the field goal, and then got a touchdown on the, the Dreisbach long run, and then the safety they gave up. And then they kicked the field goal, and then just before the half. So not a lot of good stuff for Michigan. I tell you what, though, you let a team like Illinois just hang around and let them keep hanging around. All of a sudden, you... Yeah, and I think that's what Lou's philosophy was in the first half. Not throwing on third and 15, yep. but running the ball. Just not making any stupid mistakes. Don't turn the ball over. Don't help Michigan. We're on the road. Just stay close and have a chance to win at the end. Yep. Ten and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Still a 10 to 5 ball game. Michigan with a first down as uh, they move it downfield. They started at their own 45. Nice block is 5 out of 13 to 55 yards. This is Williams again, slipping and sliding. Chris Howard not eligible to play today because he hasn't completed some work from the summer school session. Above the old Michigan Stadium, the Goodyear blimp. And if you see the blimp in town, you know full well there's a party at hand. Goodyear's been providing aerial views like this for significant events for over 30 years. Ball is at the 21. Second down, four for the Wolverines. Moving on the Illini right now. Williams. First down. Williams is 5'9", stocky fellow, 196. The sophomore out of Detroit. Michigan has come out in the second half, Keith, and has really uh, got that offensive line blocking. There are some holes in that offensive line and defensive front that weren't there in the first half. Of course, the thing that kept this drive going was that third down penalty on the sideline against the Stallings. Time out. Time call. Illinois. The defense right now in a little bit of trouble as the Wolverines have the ball first down at the Illinois 16. Michigan leading by a score of 10 to 5. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by the all-new Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength and the United States Postal Service. All right, the Illini defenders have had their talk. The ball is at their own 16. Michigan offense moving the ball right now. Shaw goes in motion. Dreisbach hands the ball away. Obviously, it was a good conversation for the Illinois defense because number 26 comes blowing in. That's Marshall, too. And Keith. Marshall, yeah. number 93. That's a good point that you bring up. You know, the, the Wolverines marched the ball down the field. It's unusual for a defense to take a timeout, but they took a timeout. Tepper called it, brought his guys to the sideline and says, hey, this is what they're doing. Maybe told them what the uh, blocking scheme was, changed the philosophy defensively. The first play, they get a uh, negative play for the offense. Paul Marshall, big senior out of Naperville, playing that nose tackle position. Dreisbach has time this time, but throws behind the tight end and can't get anywhere near Mark Campbell. He was well covered. You know who's playing a heck of a football game for Illinois? Is that James Williams, cornerback. Yeah, well, he, he had his man covered. Danny Clark had his man covered, too. Dreisbach now is 5 of 14 for 55 yards and hit on only one of his last eight. But there hasn't been anybody open. 
It's third down and 13 now after the loss from the tackle by Marshall. Pass is too high intended for Clarence Williams, and it's fourth down. It's not it's not Dry's box ball. It's the 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 Illinois defensively is just has everybody covered, and he's. You know, if he was, you know, he could try and complete them, but they'd be intercepted. It's, you know, Illinois defensively is just covering them. 36 yard field goal try for Remy Hamilton. He has hit from 27. He missed on a block from 29. That's blocked also and picked up by the Illinois man who blocked it, Ryan Murphy. So the Illini come below it in and just smother the kick. Special teams. Yep, special teams again. Put the football out at the 46-yard line for the Illini. That's from the left side of the screen. Number 56, Murphy just comes through. How can you come through at that spot, spot in the line? There's a look at it from behind. I mean, he just smothered it. Well, you got somebody in the kitchen there. <laughs> <laughs> with a cleaver. Just uh, give credit to the uh, coaching staff of the Illini coming up with some key plays on special special teams. 46-yard line, first down. Here's Weaver in trouble, gets his pass away. It is caught for the fullback, Rodney Bird. Knocked it loose. Did they knock it away? Oh, did he ever? Bird, the big fullback, catches it, and that's Woodson, number two, that just knocks the ball out. Woodson's a hitter. Again, he, he doesn't look like he's that big, 197 pounds. But... You mentioned last year he was the freshman of the year in the Big Ten. He had eight takeaways last year, five interceptions, and three fumble recoveries. Put the ball at the 49. He was an all-conference player as a true freshman. Second down and seven. Eight and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Ten to five, Michigan lead. Weaver hums one. Pass is completed to number 22, Rob Majoy, sophomore from Huron, Ohio. Not a first down, however. It is at the 46 on the Michigan side. Tonight on ABC, part one of the television event of last season is back. The Beatles Anthology, featuring the legendary group's own story in their own words. It's the Beatles Anthology tonight on ABC, right after second Noah. Seven different receivers in the ball game so far for Illinois. Third and two. Weaver throws quickly and just gets his first down. Gets the ball to the big tight end, Cushing. Just barely was able to get the first down as Marcus Ray was trying to hold him. Jared Irons, a four-year starter. Well, that's not fair. That's not fair to the quarterbacks around the league if somebody got to block uh, Jared. That's about the third time today he's come completely free. He's led the team in tackles two times. He's a, something special, I guess, around Michigan, a two-year captain. There's not many players at uh, this university that have been captain, team captains for two different years, and I think he's one of like seven or eight players that have done it. First down, Weaver's in trouble, and down he goes, David Bowens, the sophomore from Pontiac, brought him down, loss on the play, back to the 48, five yard, almost a five yard loss, call it second down and 15. up over the tight end. Number six, the man that just made that last play. Ball handed off to Robert Holcomb. He got a little help from the corner and gained about five yards over there. He did that on his own because there was a big pile up in his backfield. Michigan was stunning and he just, just got around it. 
Michigan coming into the game only given up 93 yards last year per game on the ground. Gothard is in, Holcomb is out, Bird is out, Majoy back in. Figures to be a passing down on third and ten from the Michigan 43. Drops it off to Gothard, trying to pick his way through the crowd. And we'll move it to about the 35, and here's a penalty flag. It's a late flag. Illinois players clapping. I think, I think he, I think it's on Woodson. The official threw the flag and looked right at, at Woodson. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic, Ooh. first down. That's a big one. Well, that's, in a way, that's like a turnover because the defense had the offense stopped, and now you give them possession of the ball again for the first down. At the 21-yard line. Remember, that's what I said, let them hang around, let them hang around. First thing you know, you look at the scoreboard, and it's going the other way. Here's the pass across the field to Mosley, and Mosley can't get away from Woodson, but will get to about the 13-yard line. So that's a pickup of about eight yards on that play. Well, the way Illinois is moving the ball is through the air, and it's not on long passing. It's just possession passing, just short five-step drop, throw it, move it around. The tight ends caught some balls. I think they need to get the ball to Dulick, though. He is their big play guy. He was breaking to the end zone that time, and if Weaver would have just stayed with him a second longer, I think he would have had it. He's down to the two. Fine run by Holcomb. That'll be first down and goal, Illinois, at the Michigan two. Mike Elston stopped him. The numbers on Scott Weaver have improved dramatically. Started out quite slowly. 17 of 23 now for 128 yards. And he has always played well against Michigan. In the last couple of years, Keith, against Michigan, he has come off the bench and came on and done very well. And I'm sure that's a confidence thing for him coming into this ballgame. The big guy, Bird. Not this time. Well, the offensive line just got stuffed at, at the line of scrimmage. There was no place for Bird to sky if that's what he was trying to do, going over the top. The broad sword was there waiting for him. The one named Sam. Bob and Keith, if, if the offensive line in Michigan, they have problems down here hearing the snap, it's because a crowd in the end zone is becoming the 12th man for the Michigan defense. All right, Scott Weaver drops the football, picks it up, and he's stopped at the four. No trouble on the exchange. Yeah. Again, you, you always think, the last thing you think about is the quarterback center exchange, and that's the first thing, obviously, that starts every play. When you move a, a player to center, as, as Chris Brown has moved from, from tight end to center, he didn't get the football up. He was blocking, moving the block before you get the ball all the way back. It's third and goal from the four. You get in pressure situations and revert to other other things, and Chris Brown is just not getting the ball back. And Scott Weaver is walking to the sidelines. Giffy. Weaver's there. For a moment on the sidelines, uh, the backup quarterback, Mark Hookstra, was warming up, taking snaps, put on his helmet. And now Weaver, at the last second, says, I'm okay, I'm coming out. Yeah. And, and he's back out ball's there. Ball's on the ground. Weaver, he just got stretched. He got about 
thousand pounds fall on him too right on his chest so Weaver does come back and it is third down and goal from the four his pass complete but not for the touchdown Mark Matt pushing would maybe gain a yard on the play and that will get your field goal unit on the field Well, he had four receivers out. Both uh, wide receivers were running slants. And uh, the only guy to throw it to was the one he did. And Michigan just had a good defensive uh, play on it. Shoepline is out. He's been good from 38 today. And he's been wide right from 37. This is a 20-yarder. Weaver holds. He hammered it through. And so at 3.46 to go in the third quarter, it is now Michigan 10 and Illinois 8. So they're still hanging around. Next Saturday, it's a college football doubleheader on ABC Sports. Regional action, noon Eastern. Michigan State will be at Nebraska, the defending national champions. Then at 3.30 Eastern, Illinois will be at home with Southern California. Louisville meets number seven, Penn State, plus other regional action. Check your local listing on your ABC station or check your cable operator for the games he might have available next Saturday from ABC Sports. The Michigan defense rearing up and holding Illinois out of the end zone. This game right. has been controlled, Keith, by the defenses and by the kicking teams. Yep. The offenses, if they have moved the ball, and they've moved it between the 20s, and when they get inside the 10, they stall. The defenses, not unusual, like we've said all day, for that to happen this time of year. Defenses are usually ahead because they just be aggressive, and for the offenses, you need timing, working things out. Scoring is going to touch down and a field goal for Michigan. For Illinois, a safety and two field goals. 10 to 8. Schuplein will kick off. Chuck Winters and Tyrone Butterfield waiting for Michigan. He hammers that thing, doesn't he? That's in beyond the field of play. It'll come to the 20 first down. That's when you want to be on the uh, kickoff uh, team is when your kicker kicks it out of the end zone. I could kick off coverage. I'd like to be on that one. Saves a lot of bruises. Who was it one time described with running kicks back like running through a thunderstorm? Who was that? Desmond Howard? Somebody had well, a... That's about the last time <laughs> vivid description of what it felt like. Well, it seems people. like that's how long it's been since Michigan had just some good uh, well, returns. Right. Yep. Dreisbach is in it. Quarterback turns and bootlegs the ball out. Looking to go deep down the middle. He's got high streets on the dead run and Shaw and neither man can get to it. And it's second down and ten. Michigan on the first play of the second half threw it deep to Russell Shaw and then on the first play of this series wanted to air it out and I think that's good whether you complete it or whether you don't at least it's telling the defense of Illinois that hey we're not only going to throw it short so you better play deep in case we uh, hit one over you. Bryce Bach is now 5 of 16 for 55 yards. They run it with Williams he pops out of there. You know, once he pops through the hole and gets the acceleration, the mind turns over and the memory starts searching back. He looks like Charles White. Rod Payne is the center, number 52. He helps on the block on Marshall. Then he goes over and looking for somebody. There's nobody there. That's the kind of blocks Payne likes. And then he runs right up through the safeties. And he, safety, no contact until about 15, 18 yards downfield. Watch Payne, 52. He's got some quickness. He's looking for somebody to block. <laughs> I saw him early on in the ballgame one play. He was walking around through it, didn't have any money to block. 
This ball is thrown underneath. The ball is caught by Butterfield, the sophomore from Miami. He's going to wind up just about a yard short of his first down. I think what Michigan is doing is good, Keith. Fred Jackson, the offensive coordinator, now is moving Dreisbach some out of the pocket. He has missed a bunch of throws. Get him outside the pocket. Roll him out. It's easier to read, and it's easier to see the coverage and your receivers. And you also make those uh, big people run on the defensive That's side true. of the ball. Eventually, they'll get tired. This is Williams. He's got the first down, and he moves up to the Michigan 48-yard line. Week off, and then they go to Boulder, Colorado. And both of these teams, Keith, are going to need to improve before they play their next game. Yep. And and both of them will. You know the old the old saying is you get proof a lot between your first and second game, and I think that is very true, especially with a week off. First down, 48 yard line. Shaw's in motion. Reisbach gives it to Williams. Bounces outside. That's another first down. Move the chains. We go to John Saunders. It's time for the Burger King College Football Play of the Day. And we go to the ACC Clemson in North Carolina. Leon Johnson having a terrific day. Or we'll call a 67-yard run that took it down to the one-yard line. He punched it in for the touchdown. Carolina is rolling. Three touchdowns in under four minutes, leading it 31-0. Keith. Yeah, but you know, you know his teammates are going to give him uh, give him some static about being caught from behind and not making it into the end zone. Right? From the 41, prize box pass, touch to the sideline, Butterfield, it's just a bit too high for Tyrone. He's only 5'8". If he'd have been 5'10", he'd have caught it. He hit that, uh, the kicking thing over there where the place kickers warm up, but he's all right. Yeah, that's the first fourth throw that Dreisbach has made. Let's go ahead and run the Telestrator, and I'll show you. There's going to be three receivers out here. They're going to flood this area. Now, if you stop it right here, this receiver is going deep. He's trying to throw it to this receiver right out here. He's wide open. He just threw it too high and too far. It's second and ten. No flag. The defender jumped a little bit, got back. <laughs> They're going to mark the ball down at the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and eight. Lloyd Carr took over for Gary Moeller last year. It was his first season. Uh, Moeller was let go. And, you know, Gary is doing very well. I, I, you know, he was picked up. Gary Moeller was picked up by the Cincinnati Bengals in the NFL and signed. He's coaching the tight ends and doing very well and, and doing a great job. Chris Floyd, a single back. Timeout, Michigan. A minute and 37 seconds to go in the third quarter. 10 to 8, Wolverines by two over the Illini. Monday night, the big names in the history of professional football share memories with us. A one-hour primetime special, ABC's Monday Night Football Mania. Chicago Bears uh, will be up again it with Troy Aikman and the defending world champion Dallas Cowboys on the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. And there's Al, and there's Dan, and there's Frank. Did I see Al with a little uh, stash? I truly hope not. <laughs> I think he's got a stash. Huh? He doesn't nah, have a stash? No, no. no I thought no. I saw him have a stash. Yeah. Al, you need to have a stash by Monday night to prove these guys wrong. <laughs> we'll draw he's one in on we'll, we'll draw we'll draw a mustache on. Lindo pound him. <laughs> I thought he looked pretty looked like he did. He's deep into a golf these days. Ball is on the 40-yard line, third down and eight. A minute and 37 seconds to play in this third quarter. 
only two points separating them. And this, if Michigan is to keep this possession moving, look out. He steps away from that pressure, but he isn't going anywhere because he steps up and runs right into traffic, and down he goes. And it'll be fourth down and nine. Defense just, they just don't know who to block the offensive line. Illinois setting up in that zone defense. I mean, the little uh, sugar blitz. Brian Greasy's out to punt. It'll be his second punt of the day. The first one was a 37 yarder. The one they fritted away down on the goal line when they could have killed it. Brian to pooch kick it. He's not going to mess with it this time. He kicked it out of bounds down at the seven yard line so he said you guys didn't handle it the last time i'll just put it out on the seven here's john again keith we know about the explosiveness of the florida gators on their opening drive a fourth and one they go for it terry jackson punches this one across against southwest louisiana and right now it's a seven nothing game with the game barely underway keith that's a fearsome opening. Ah, oh, the difference between playing Southwest Louisiana Ooh. and a conference foe like these two, huh? <laughs> Considerable. Yeah. All right, Illinois will go from the seven with Holcomb and Bird lined up behind Scott Weaver, who looks all right now. It's Holcomb, no place to go, down at the five. William Carr. And uh, who else at number five in there? That's Mike Elston. Look at it from the end zone. Holcomb standing right on the end zone line. Does he see? He didn't see anything. You had the ball right there. Nothing but a. Yeah, 93 Sam Sword was also in the bottom of that pile. Yeah. Runs into Irons, Jared Irons, right in the bottom, got his helmet on his feet, and down he went. And the seconds are ticking away after three quarters of play. It is Michigan 10, Illinois 8. We'll be back with more after this message and the word from our ABC station. A postcard of Ann Arbor as we go to the final quarter of play. Michigan 10, Illinois 8, third down and just about 10 yards for Illinois from their own seven yard line. And Weaver hands the ball to Dockard who gets to the 11 yard line. It will bring up fourth down and the Illini will have to kick it away. It also means the Michigan offense should get very good field position. Again, uh, as you mentioned, Michigan, uh, Illinois playing it very close to the best, not turning the ball over. Conservative play call. Jason Higgins knocks it out for Chuck Winters. Winters handles it all right, goes to the 40, and he is tumbled back from there. But it is the Illinois 40-yard line where the Michigan Wolverines will have the ball. Let's look at the numbers after three quarters. Uh, the bottom number jumps out at me. Time of possession, almost seven minutes more for Illinois, although the number of plays is only eight more for Illinois. Total yardage is about the same. The difference really has been on special teams, and Illinois has had the best of that. They've blocked two kicks, and uh, their kickoff return yardage is tremendous as opposed to what Michigan has had. Clarence Williams lines up in the single back with Shaw in motion. Williams. Number 93, Paul Marshall made the first contact for the Illini. Rushing yardage on that graphic was 205 for Michigan and only 80 for Illinois. As you take a look at young Marshall, who is a mainstay in that defensive line. Dennis Stallings, I should give some credit there, too, because he went under. He's very active, that fellow Stallings, I'll tell you. 
he's got a piece of a lot of <laughs> mayhem that's going on down there underneath everybody. This is Williams again. Oh, top down. And only number three kept him from going a long way. Mariano Wood, the senior out of Chicago. Let's take a close look up at that blocking in the offensive line. It looks like Michigan has just decided to go straight at him. Here's the center, Rod Payne, blocking back. Straight blocking. The right guard, that's Adam. He comes off in the face of the linebacker. Number 68, straight up. Williams has 22 carries, 75 yards, and it's Chris Floyd in the backfield now. On first down, he's got the ball. And Chris, a tough guy, 227 yard, uh, pounds, will uh, move the ball to the 24-yard line, a pickup of about three. The backup at the fullback position, if you were just to go down numerically, would be John Eanes, a freshman, true freshman. And then William Carr, the nose guard. <laughs> uh -huh. Second down and seven. I thought he looked pretty nifty in practice the other day. It was just inside the five-yard line, my man. <laughs> Dreisbach back throws down the middle. Pass complete to the tight end, Mark Kimball. And Campbell is at the 20. He's two yards short of the first down. The ball was a little behind him, and he had slowed him just a bit. He's a big guy, 6'6", 250, just a sophomore. They think he can really be good, too, Keith. He is a big target, as you just talked about. And he's a good blocker. Michigan is four out of ten on third down conversions. With Floyd, the single back. goes in motion. Price box throwing underneath. Jeremy Truman had a double tight in alignment with Campbell breaking off into an H-back movement. And Truman, sophomore from Liberal, Kansas, makes the catch for the first down. Put it on the 13-yard line. So this has been the area where both teams have been inside the defense's 20-yard line and have not converted on offense. The only touchdown in this game was a 72-yard run by Dreisbach. That's Butterfield skittering across the field in motion. This is Williams running in traffic inside the 10 by just the pad. Again, it's Stallings, the last man to get up under the pile. Stallings is a speech communication major, Keith. I wonder if he's doing any talking down there on the field to the other team. I think he's too tired for now. <laughs> he's planning a teaching career after he gets out. I think half the Michigan football team is enrolled in the kinesiology division. Nice block back. So the motion comes over here and is going to go straight out, but Shaw just going to go down and hook in the end zone. Motion comes out, pulls the linebacker out with him. Shaw does a nice job. The ball only has to break the plane of the goal line. You don't have to come down with your feet, but I think you do. Hamilton with a kick after good. And that is Russell Shaw's first Division 1A catch. And he's the first junior college recruit here at Michigan since 1986. Ten years, yeah. Michigan showing some precision in that possession stuck in the end zone from the 40. Well, you know, you got to hand it to the Illinois defense, so they've played well all day, and their they special teams play. have played well all day. It's time for the offense to step up and, and, and do something. 
It's 17 to 8 now. So, and only 10.53 to play in the game. If they've got something left, time to spend it. Oh, don't come out with it. Well, he can't come out once the ball crosses the goal line. It's a touchback. So the Michigan Wolverines, playing their 117th season of football, have forged a lead of 17 to 8. We know that Michigan has won more Division 1A football games than anybody else, 756, followed by Notre Dame, Alabama, Texas, and Nebraska. Michigan only had to go 40 yards to get that touchdown. They had good field position. Weaver is at quarterback. He's got Holcomb and Bird behind him. He's going to throw. The ball is tipped and falls incomplete. Ball tipped by Jarrett Irons. David Boynes was also in his face. This is the Jarrett Irons highlight hour right here. Nobody blocked him. I think half the time today, nobody is blocking Irons, and he does a nice job of not hitting, really laying a hit on the quarterback because the ball was gone. 13 tackles, fumble recovery, and a sack, and goodness knows how many hurries. Weaver again. Throws, and it's deflected away by Joaquin Fizel, number 90, the sophomore from Fort Valley, Georgia. Get your hands up. He's 6'4", 268. Yeah. These defenders are big people. Yeah. Ben Huff is but as a, You're right, Keith, but as a quarterback, when you throw that pass, you got to be quick. You talk about a quick release. A quick release is when the time you make up your mind to throw till you get it past that defensive lineman. Or you have to throw around him. That was a touch pass, and, and, you, and you're not thinking about that, but it just appears, and you got to be able to go to just make the play. you got to throw around him or over him quickly. It's third and ten. Jason Bulick. And it's fourth and ten. The that Michigan defense yeah, well, pretty much just turned this thing that, around. That just showed right there how superior the Michigan defense was over the Illinois offense, and especially the offensive line, because yep. they just they, there was they were like they weren't in there. Jason Higgins spins it out to Chuck Winters at the 46. The flag is thrown, and uh, the winners is down at about the 47. The flag is across the field. Steve Payman will track it down. Lloyd Carr, native son of Tennessee, finding his career in Big Ten country. 16 years he's been at the University of Michigan. This is his second year as a head coach. Holding, receiving team. 10 yards from the post scrimmage kick spot, first down. So that backs the Wolverines up. 10 yards. 10 34 to play at a ball game. Michigan leading 17 to 8. Here's a moment with Jared Iron. Unblocked. Recovered fumble. Determination. Unblocked. A moment of rest. <laughs> Fifth year senior. He is unquestionably the leader, not only of that defense, but of the team. His father played a little uh, linebacker with the Raiders for yeah, a while. Gerald. Yeah. Him. This is Clarence Williams carrying from the 37 yard line of Michigan. And he picks up four yards. Gets the clock rolling along now. Coming up on 10 minutes to play in a ball game. Talk about Dennis Stallings and all these different linebackers for uh, Illinois and the Butkus Award winner, Keith. I remember playing against Butkus in my rookie year against the Dolphins, and he 
talk about being intimidated. I lined up behind my right guard one time, and the guard said, what you doing, rookie? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I'm trying to find enough help to yeah. survive this. <laughs> Chris Floyd carries and picks up a couple. I played golf some recently with Dick. Become a pretty good player. The crowd today is 105,992. That's the 29th largest Michigan crowd. Somebody told me the other day they're sold out for the season. Just all of their season tickets are sold. This is the tight end, Campbell. And he's got a first down for the Wolverines. And it looks like now that maybe the Illinois defenders have grown a little weary. Yeah, and that's a nice call, too. Fred Jackson on the sideline calling the plays. Just pick up the first down. Get yourself in a situation where you've got several targets. Keep possession of the football. Inside, 10 minutes to go. Michigan moving again. Williams bouncing outside, can't get away from number 99, Siron Brown. The Goodyear blimp floating gently above Old Michigan Stadium. Been there all day. You know you're going to have a unique view. You know there's something special going on when the Goodyear blimp spirit of Akron passes ever so gently by. Say, when they go from one site to another, they only go like 300 miles a day. Sometimes not that much. They, they're not going to have to go very far because I, they're going over to the Monday night game in Chicago. So this will be one of their shorter trips. It'll take the better part of a day by the time they get it tied down, probably. You've got a timeout on the field at 826 to play in the ball game. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know, use Valvoline. State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Burger King, where you get your burgers worth. Now the Illinois defense is beleaguered. It's tired. It's been on the field a lot. I mean a lot today. The team is trailing 17 to 8. It's late in the game. And the Michigan offense looks pretty fresh. Dreisbach throws. Man open. That's a tight end. Truman. And it's a big play. Truman is all the way down to the 25-yard line. First down, Michigan. It's a good call by uh, Freddie Jackson, the offensive coordinator. And... Dan Parrish, the new quarterback coach, they're going to play a fake a play, but the tight end is going to sneak right by both of those defenders. Fake it that way, wide open, just get him the ball. Stan Parrish came over, and I mentioned there was a look at Stan right there. He had spent six years at Rutgers, and that's when they had uh, some good offenses there. He's been a head coach at Marshall and Kansas State going to make it a big improvement in the passing uh, game of the uh, Wolverines. This is Williams. Got to get back against right. the flow and gets inside the 20. Kansas State opened uh, with some authority today, too, didn't they? Yes, they did. I'll tell you, the Big 12, Keith, it's going to be a tough conference. They're going to be yep. knocking each other off before it's over with. Yep. Pretty hard to go through any conference undefeated. If you're playing, there's a lot of quicksand in places like mm -hmm. Pullman, Washington, or Eugene, Oregon, or West Lafayette, Indiana, and on and on. You know, people that might not have the big numbers will just take your head off some weekend. Here goes William. And that's another first down. So Michigan grinding it out now against the tired Illinois defense, leading 17 to 8. If time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty Carano College football postgame report with John Saunders and Todd Blackledge, featuring scores and highlights from across the country.
Chris Floyd to single back. Floyd's got it. Brought down by James Williams. He played a nice ball game at the cornerback for Illinois. But I think you can clearly see now that it's a tired uh, Illinois defense. And you said it at the beginning of the telecast, Keith, when we introduced the offensive line for Michigan, the inside three anatomy that time with Payne and Denson doing a nice job in there. Illinois has been on the ground so much, uh, on the field so much, that Michigan is starting to run the ball on the ground and run it very well. Stalling lip limping off. I hope that's only a cramp. He's played well today, too. Yeah. Very it's well. Like, it looks like it's nothing serious. The stars of the ball yeah. game have been on the defensive side of the ball, I think. You go line back. I got first down. Collins has 11 tackles in this point. It looks like it just was a cramp. Floyd, single back. Butterfield in motion. Drive spot gives to Floyd. And he's just hammering now. He's close to a first down. Wolverines can smell it. Take a look from behind the defense. Payne is the center. That's Marshall, 93, he's blocking on. Clawson is 92. If you're an offensive team in this situation, Keith, and you've got downs, like, well, it's third and one, obviously you've got to pick up a first down, but you enjoy running the time off the clock as long as you're going to get some points eventually. Third and one, tenth play in this possession. Floyd again. And I don't think he made his first down. I don't think so. The Illini fighting hard, hanging in. Oh, you're, up by, me. you're up by nine points. You're up by nine points. The field goal will put you up by 12. You're talking about a season. This is the opening game. You're up by nine. Do you want a gut check? They're talking right now about what play would we run if we go for it on fourth. What, what's your best play? What play would we run? It's, it's Lloyd's decision, Carr's decision, whether what we do. They're going. Now they're going to kick it. No, nope, going to kick it. Yeah. Here's well. I don't know about this decision. They're, they've had two field goals blocked. Illinois is, has uh, had their number blocking field goals. Well, the field goal and, and a touchdown uh, is better than nine points. If they don't get something here, this puts them in a where they got to go for two touchdowns. I'm sure that's the logic. The 20 yard try. Greasy holes of Hamilton kicks. And he got it. So it's now a 20 to 8 lead. Michigan over Illinois. some of the moments of today's ball game here at Michigan Stadium where 105,992 came to have a good time and they've had it <clears throat> and the home team has forged a 12 point lead with 5 minutes and 13 seconds to play. Michigan kicks off and it's beyond the field of play. Tomorrow don't miss the final round of the Greater Milwaukee Open presented by Miller Lite. Jesper Parnovic of Sweden leads the pack. He's having a, oh, had a great round today, boy. In his professional debut, Tiger Woods. And in round number three had a 73. He's now four under. The coverage begins at four Eastern, three Central, and Pacific. Is that the guy that, ABC. is that the guy that doesn't know how to wear his cap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me why he wears a cap. He's a walking billboard. Normally, you know, you wear a cap, it's to, to shade your eyes or shade your nose. He sold a bill of his cap. <laughs> the underside of it. 
<laughs> yes, sir. First down. Apparently, he's a fun guy. He can play. He can play. Woo. And on first down, Weaver gets the pass away. Complete to Dulick. Dulick up to the 26, 27 on the play. The average. Um, There's uh, Kansas State, 21 to 11. They're now in the fourth quarter. Spike Dykes bunch has tightened that thing up a little bit. K-State jumped out to a pretty good lead. Uh, Jason Dulick, uh, <coughs> Keith, is going to be a good receiver all year long. He came in 116 receptions and 11 touchdowns. And they'll be seeing him catch a lot of balls this year. Second down from the 27. Weaver throws to the sidelines. Holcomb has a first down at the 31. So they'll move the chains. Our coordinating producer of ABC's college football, Bob Goodrich, produced today's game. Our associate coordinating producer, Jimmy Rustler, who's out in Boulder. Directed today by Drew Esikoff, who's back with us. And will be every week. Technical director, Gary Larkins. Mitch Green, our associate director, production manager, Robbie Weiss. Our tech ops manager, Claude Phipps. Assistant to the producer, Bob O'Mara, Jay Galloway. Computer stats, Mark Amento, and our sideline coordinator, Dick Schafter. To my left, Todd Barry. To my right, Dave Bernson. And Weaver gets away. Now Holcomb tries to give him a little help, get him up the sidelines, and he's got about six yards on that play. We've got a whole bunch of folks who work very hard to make these telecasts possible, and they run all over the world. Yes, they do. They do a great job. Scott Weaver has done a good job today, too, Keith. I, 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 the offensive line was a question mark last year. I, I don't think they have answered that question yet. I think they still have some problems in there. The center, the center quarterback exchange has to be something that just happens. You can't be thinking about it. Second down and three. Weaver throws down the middle. Holcomb makes a good catch. There's a hard ball to catch, thrown behind him in the heart, but he reeled it in, and he's got a first down at midfield for the Illini. Weaver is 21 of 30, 152 yards, and has not turned the ball over on an interception. They've got some skill players. They've got uh, Holcomb and, and Douthert and Dulick. The offensive line just matures a little bit, ties it together. The defense is there. Well, you go trucking into Champaign in late September, October, November, they can beat you. I don't care who you are, they can beat you. Yeah, that's, a, that's a hard win. Had a little quick pop out to Marcus Mosley, and he's well covered, but he still makes the catch and gets something out of the play. It was Woodson covering him, the field side cornerback. There's a lot of players coming out of Bloomington, Illinois these days. I want some of that water. <laughs> That's where Mosley's from. Second down and five. Again, going underneath, taking the short play. The pass is incomplete. He was intended for Majoy. Mainly, it was the hit. This is Lou's fifth year at Illinois, Keith, and as you know, he has done a wonderful job. Uh, in fact, uh, Illinois has the highest graduation graduation rate in the Big Ten. He's brought in discipline and uh, corrected the, the problems that, that existed there when he came uh, in. And, uh, Got to get an offense, though. Yeah. And, uh, Third down and five. Pressure coming. First down, a little pass thrown on a simple slant inside to Douthert, and Douthert uh, tucks it away, being a back, and move the chains again. Clock showing three minutes and 17 seconds to play in the ball game. 20 to 8, Michigan lead. That's a Hummer. That is. Marcus Ray jumping up and down and saying, "Fingers, how come you betrayed me?" Well, if you ever had a tip drill, this is the this is what they named it after because uh, they work on this all the time. And Michigan had 30 takeaways last year. They're only rushing three, so you're dropping eight. It's tough to throw into that kind of uh, coverage. Now you got to relax and just say, "Okay, now I realize there's nobody around to hit me. Just let me catch it." <laughs> 
Oh, hold me. Second down and ten. Run it up the pipe. And he almost popped out of there. He moves it down to the 30. That's a good six yards. I doubted. He's a very good, solid, versatile player. He can do a lot of things for you. Well, he can run, but the biggest thing he uh, has a good back on is catching the ball. That's another first down. Here we go again with the old prevent defense, Keith. The uh, offense just moving the ball right down the field. Yeah, I, and this is where. Well, then the other thing is your off, your defensive line wears down. You need to keep fresh guys in there. Here comes some pressure. Going to the corner for Dulick. They get tangled up. He falls down. There is no foul. He was just simply well covered by Charles Woodson. Dulick and Woodson have been battling all day long, not only physically but also verbally. They've been talking back and forth. Woodson was a consensus all Big Ten player last year as a true freshman. And Dulick is one of the top receivers coming back in the Big Ten this year. Michigan calls a timeout. They had to because one of their players came to the sideline just absolutely winded. Next Saturday, college football doubleheader on ABC Sports. Regional action, noon Eastern. Michigan State against Nebraska and Lincoln. That'll be fun. I think it'll be a good game. 37 straight wins for Nebraska, by the way. Yeah, well, Michigan State looked pretty good today. Illinois is at home against USC. Here goes. Weaver back. Throws incomplete. Boy, I'll tell you what. Bowen's just leveled him. David Bournes was coming, and Scott Weaver simply has just had the wind knocked out of him. He was hit hard. Take a look to your left side. Machado is uh, 67. Bowens has two sacks already today. And you got to slow him down a little bit. Look at 67 Machado. He was a walk-on offensive lineman who was the strongest Illini. Let's look at Bowens. When you go down flat on your back like that, I mean, it just... Oh, yeah. All the air goes right out of you, doesn't it? Of course, you never got knocked down like no, that. No, 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 no. There's a look at Machado. <laughs> he just got his scholarship this spring. He did. Here comes Boyd again. And he just beat Machado there. It's his third sack of the afternoon. JP, you better block that man or he's going to kill you, boy. <laughs> My gosh. Minute 57 to play in the ball game. Well, Shadell, Paul Shadell told me uh, coming into the game, the offensive line, especially the tackles, were a little bit weak, and, and that's what Michigan has exploited this afternoon. When they've, when they've rushed the passer, they've come from the outside. Illinois has uh, spent its last time out now, and they're going to reset the clock to 2.03. Michigan leading by a score of 20 to 8. We told you earlier on uh, that everybody doesn't play everybody uh, throughout all of these seasons, and these are uh, the listing of the teams at Northwestern, for example, doesn't play Michigan State, Ohio State, and Penn State doesn't play Illinois, Minnesota. Ohio State doesn't play Michigan State and Northwestern. Iowa and Wisconsin are missing from the Michigan schedule, and Iowa does not play Michigan and Purdue. So now, who, do you, who do you think gets the, the Michigan break? Iowa failing to play each other might have some significance before the season is done in the Big Ten. So who do you think gets the big break about not playing other schools? Uh, Michigan looks to me like Northwestern. Well, yeah, yeah. Northwestern and Michigan too. Uh, Iowa, Wisconsin could be troublesome. Oh, no, I'm not saying that at all. I, I think I think those two teams. Those two teams that you just mentioned will be the surprise teams yep. this year in the Big Ten. I'm not saying they're going to do what Northwestern did last year, but watch out for Hayden Fry. Well, he's been humming instead of talking. That's <laughs> right now. Uh -huh. A little quick pop to Dulick. Dulick trying to find the sticks and can't do it. 
But he'll get about so on fourth down, however, he'll come up about two yards short of the first down, and the Michigan defense has stopped Illinois and for all intents and purposes slammed the door on any threat the Illini might have manifested. And in this particular perception, possession for Illinois, it was David Bowen that made most of the noise defensively for the Wolverines. Dulick just simply could not squeeze his way past the Michigan man to get the first down. So now it's a matter of running out the clock with a minute and 56 to play. I think both teams, Keith, go back to the drawing board and, and take a look and say, all right, we made a lot of mistakes. Michigan has a week off before they go into uh, Colorado. Illinois comes right back next ball. week with USC, so they don't have as much time. But we we saw UC, USC last week, and they're young. They have a lot of inexperience on their offensive line also. I don't believe 20 points will win a game for you in Colorado. Do you? Michigan, 20 out there? I don't think so. The Colorado line lines up those wide receivers four across on that artificial turf. Michigan better have some uh, some good defensive backs and a good uh, some good pressure on the quarterback. Might need a bear trap and a couple of long rifles for that bunch. What is that old plain rifle that uh, the sharp? They might need a sharp. Thirty-seven twelve. is running at 40 seconds now. Illinois with no times out to uh, stop the clock. Michigan just taking the snaps. Dreisbach putting a knee down and the clock will roll along. And in this affair, these teams will not play now next year. So this breaks a 73 consecutive game string. Weaver did all he could, but it just simply wasn't quite enough. As the University of Michigan Wolverine will put W on the board to start the season with a win over Illinois by a score of 20 to 8. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan. Hope you enjoyed it. The genuine Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game are Dennis Stallings for Illinois, 11 tackles, the leader of the Illini defense that played valiantly. Garrett Irons of Michigan at 15 tackles, a fumble recovery, and a sack. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for academic achievements and help those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. Tomorrow, don't miss the final round of the Greater Milwaukee Open presented by Miller Lite. Our coverage begins at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and Pacific. And Jesper Parnovic of Sweden is the leader. And so it is a good night from Ann Arbor, Michigan. We hope you enjoyed the opening weekend of college football in the Big Ten.